Hey, what's up? We should be live. Let me just test out the audio and make sure I can actually hear myself. Um, let me see. View on YouTube. <laughs> got in the nick of time. Maybe I'm one minute late, though. Yeah, good. I can hear myself. Audio quality is decent. Let me know if it's bad. I don't know. I'm with my mic, so it's... I don't know. Hopefully, it will be a little better, but I just want to move it so it's not in my way. I uh, hope everyone's doing well. Today... It's just one of those live streams. Uh, you ask me questions, I answer. We can talk about anything you want. Um, it doesn't even have to be, honestly, a question. Just give me a moment here. It doesn't have to be a question. It can be just like a topic you want to discuss, right? You don't have a specific question in mind or anything like that. Um, I can show you a bunch of stuff I've been working on. I can share with you uh, a couple of things if, if we want to later, but it's all open. Uh, actually... Next week, we're going on a vacation for a week. Uh, and so I've been working hard on scheduling some videos for you, uh, which is why I've been a little busy and couldn't really... I didn't want to devote this live stream to doing something complex or like a painting process. Just wanted to relax uh, and talk to you and see how everyone's uh, doing. And I will, of course, give you uh, an update about what uh, things I'm working on. I'm working on a couple of good kind of long-term uh, thanks. Thank you so much, Alan, for letting me know the audio is okay. Let's go from top to bottom and see who's here. Hey, Ren, how are you doing? Thank you so much for the kind words. I uh, really, really appreciate it. Hey, Megan, how are you doing? Hope everyone's doing well here. Cheryl, how do you paint a dappled dog fur? So what's dappled? Is that like wet dog fur? What's a dappled fur? Uh, oh, is it like multiple colors? Okay, 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 I see like with this pattern, um, it really depends, you know, a lot of uh, my decision making process in how I paint things is uh, what's the message. If I want to show the dog up close and the dappled fur, I'll just paint that. I'll paint those dapples for lack of a better term. Um, but if the subject is the dog is a part of a background, I may simplify it to just a smooth gray, you know, so it really will depend on exactly what I'm trying to convey. Let me see if I can get my light a little closer to me. Here we go. I think this should be a little better. Uh, I mean, yeah, we'll see. The, the, there is a bit of natural lighting and then a bit of lighting in front of me and my ring. Um, but um, it's something I can demo at some point, right? The ultimate answer would be to actually show you how I do this. Uh, hey, Miranda, how are you doing? Hope everything is well. Hey, Cubs win. Hi from Texas. Glad to hear your answer to our questions. Yeah, definitely. That's going to be fun. Electric Hen. Hi. That's such a cool username. And the picture makes me laugh too. Uh, hey, John. Hi from uh, Bergen, Norway. Or Jan, is it? I, I think it's probably Jan. I can see and hear you well. Hope everyone is well. Thank you so, so much. Uh, DNF. Awesome. Morning from Canada. Thank you for being here. Hey, John. Hope everything is going well. I do plan on filming a video soon, kind of playing around, because I talked to you about uh, starting to use more hot press paper. Uh, so I plan on hopefully soon uh, making a video kind of showing myself playing around with the Arsh hot press. I do have a, a block here or block or a, not a block, like, a, you know, the thing you flip through <laughs> a pad. I have a pad of that uh, and I've been having some fun. You've probably seen uh, some people have probably seen that on Instagram, of course, the post I did. Just kind of, and by the way, it's super hot now. Today is like one of the hottest days we've had in a while. Um, but yeah, I uh, I hope to do more of that. I actually find that I'm enjoying hot press for for the first time in my life. Uh, that the fact that the texture doesn't limit the details is really nice, actually. Uh, but I hope you're doing super well too. Uh, and sorry that I'm slow to answer always. Um, uh, Ellen, how are you doing? Hi from Cyprus. Uh, hey, Eliza. Hello from Dulwich. Dulwich Hill, Australia. Thank you for being here. Hey, Sophia from Brazil. Thank you so, so much. Hope you're doing well. Hey, Tom. Hey, but everybody from sunny, very non-sunny uh, Newcastle, UK. Yeah, here it's it's not even super sunny, honestly. It's just normal. But and there's even a lot of like just it's a bit overcast, to be honest. But the humidity is starting to go up and it's hot. Uh, Shaka Zed, you are a great inspiration. Thank you so much. Uh, Johannes, how are you doing, my friend? Hope everything is well. I'm doing really well. Uh, David Chomsky, uh, can you explain the process of doing watercolor for comics? Um, that's a good question. It's not really something I've experienced with. I will say 
for starters, the whole illustration and kind of comic angle, that would probably be done more on smooth paper. I don't think Bristol paper can really handle watercolor that well. Um, but with like smooth paper at the very least, um, I think there's, it's almost like there's this knob, like a volume knob that is, or like a scale of how you go from realistic to more illustrative. Um, and as a, a watercolorist, I really enjoy the more um, realistic approach of trying to paint things as they appear, like to the human eye. While, whereas uh, the more illustrative approach is more about idealizing certain things, whether it's proportions and the actual form, or it's the values and stuff like that. So very often in comics, you'll see more simplified backgrounds, or maybe the, the background is just one color, right? Uh, you'll see a lot of that kind of a thing. The value may not be accurate. It'll just be kind of a color and value that works. Uh, there's a lot of a lot more, I guess, artistic license. You know, um, of course, it depends on your your style. If you paint abstract or uh, impressionistic or um, uh, expressionistic or old realism style, then of course you can change things around. Um, I actually don't have much experience for watercolor for comics. If that's something you're interested in, I would say go for it. You know, pave uh, uh, pave the path because not a lot of people do that in like a pure watercolor sense, right? I do know watercolor is used um, in comics. I actually don't know much about it. So, uh, oh, but I did share an artist, um, Little Thunder, on Instagram. Uh, she does it really well. It's like a manga comic hybrid style, and it's a lot of watercolor, and it looks so good. Um, Blaze Maxim, uh, and probably I'm pronouncing it uh, incorrect. Uh, hi from Quebec, because it's probably French, I would guess. Uh, hopefully, I did it well. Uh, Liza, my question is: Did you study art in Tel Aviv, or are you a self-taught uh, watercolor artist? So funny enough, when I started the art business. I didn't even live in Tel Aviv per se. Uh, I still lived um, with my parents at a kind of suburb town. Um, and then I started the business, still lived uh, at home. So that was huge, you know, saving expenses, the whole runway thing. Otherwise, it's really hard. Um, and then at some point, I wanted to move out and I got a job. And I had that job for a year while I was working on the business. And then the business started uh, developing more and more. Um, and then I could afford to quit. Uh, and I've been in Tel Aviv ever since then. Basically, I did not get any formal education. Everything I learned, I just learned. Like I looked for the videos, the courses online mostly. Um, there's a lesson here and there, but it's like 90% online. Almost everything I learned was, you know, things that everyone can learn from basically. Um, I don't see much value unless you're not sure of what field you want to go into and you don't want to start a business, then maybe art school makes sense. You can discover things. You have this pass for uh, one to three years where you just create and you learn what you enjoy and you open up your horizons and you meet other people and you can get some useful connections in whatever industry you're interested in. Uh, but other than that, not really. If you're going to be like a concept artist, work for studios like video games, movies, stuff like that, then yes, it could be helpful, of course. But if you're kind of paving your own path and you're interested in strictly fine art, other than connections, I'm not sure what you'd get from, uh, you know, actually studying art. Um, and as for even studying in Tel Aviv, let me think. There are a few schools, but the main one is in Jerusalem, that's Shankar, for fine art. Which And what they do is more modern. They push you to the modern things, and it's I don't like that at all. Uh, and then there is, um, uh, sorry, not Shankar, uh, did I say Shankar, Betalel. That's the main one in Jerusalem. There are also here in the area of Tel Aviv. And in Tel Aviv, but smaller ones. Oh, yeah, the answer is no. Uh, Shaka, hello. Uh, oh, yeah, okay, conversations. Uh, Dwayne, how are you doing, my friend? Hope everything is super well. Everyone check out Dwayne's YouTube channel. Uh, Luis, uh, hello, Liron. Luis, again, from the Philippines. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, Johannes, what's your recent video on color? Very interesting. Oh, yeah, that video about the only color combination you need. Yeah, I'm trying to find my balance. I feel like my content has improved recently uh, in terms of 
it's just punchier, it's more to the point, it's more interesting, and it gets more views. I'm trying to balance that out with, you know, longer uh, tutorials and kind of longer um, lessons, it's kind of the more traditional thing I'm doing. And, you know, Saturday's vid was about not matching every single color, and a lot of people seem to enjoy that, the boat uh, painting process. Um, there will be some more longer demos. This is actually a good uh, opportunity to say next week because uh, I had to prepare a lot of videos in advance because we won't be here, we'll be on vacation. Um, I took a couple of live streams. One video is going to be shot like new, but I also took a couple of live streams and kind of consolidated the process, got rid of all the fluff, all the talking, um, added a new intro and narration. So it's basically a process you've seen, but now you get to see it in 20 minutes something like that between 20 and 30 minutes instead of two hours or an hour and a half. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see how people enjoy these. I do think that because live streams don't get as many views as like the top performing videos. So if those videos manage to get to people who haven't watched the live stream, I think it would be massive value. But for some people who really watch the entire live stream, it may be boring. So I'll have to apologize about that. Uh, hey, Max. Uh, hello from Bergen. Why is your palette always so dirty? Because it doesn't matter. I just add a bit of water and it really cleans it up real fast. Plus, I like the kind of look of all colors are not fully pure. You know, it's funny because I do like to use pure colors, but I also like in, in many paintings to every color will have a bit of the other colors in it. Because sometimes I like that look, it's more nuanced and it's not just like a pure blue, a pure yellow, a pure red. That has its place, but I think the backbone of my paintings is including some of the other colors in every color. So like my blue will have a bit of red, a bit of yellow, and I don't care if it's a yellow or red that are different from the palette I'm using. So if I'm using a three colors palette, but I have a bit of red left over from a different palette, a different color from these three. I don't mind that it mixes in. It's a good way to save uh, materials and not waste a lot. Every time you clean it, you just get rid of a lot of beautiful kind of gray mixes. So why why do that? Um, I, I guess that's the point. And I paint everything with that palette and it seems to work. So, you know. Uh, Dwayne, question, how do you come up with your video titles? Yeah, that's that's a tough one, and it's a part of the things I improved uh, in the in the recent couple of months. A lot of thinking. Um, there are some recipes, quote unquote, for giving your videos more of a potential of becoming viral. Um, and there's actually a really good video on the topic. Um, I'll write it down. I'll write down. I'll just message it to you. I have you on Instagram, right? I think. I'll write it down so that I remember. Uh, viral vid, viral rids, vids vid. <laughs> I watched recently watched a really good YouTube uh, video that that talks about how to increase the potential, let's say, of virality for your videos. And um, of course, the content has to be good and all of that, all of the good, pr um, good uh, best practices. Um, but for the most part, like the actual views come from the thumbnail and title. Um, you have to really learn to know your audience and and what they care about and that takes time sometimes when you're growing you still don't know that right so right now i feel like i'm very familiar with the audience here and i know what people care about i know that people are frustrated by overwork i know that people have trouble with greens you learn a lot of things that people struggle with constantly um, but there are some things i forget you know so many of that just introductory tutorials or just very quick, simple for beginner tutorials. These are a lot of things I should be doing more of. Um, and I hope I can kind of re-remember to do that. Um, but yeah, I would say if you can talk to your audience and ask them what they're struggling with, then you can learn better what they're looking for and you can give them that. And the ideal for me is a video that has a thumbnail and a title that really attracts people because they think that's what they want to watch. And then you actually give them what they need, which is maybe a different technique or a more, uh, a more, um, a longer tutorial, you know, or something like that. Because very often the click, clickbait thumbnail, what's written in it is not actually what they need to improve, you know, I hope that makes sense for you and the small percentage of people here interested in making their own videos. Um, David says, congrats, uh, for your art from Spain. Thank you so, so much. Um, <clears throat> hey, Dragonfly Art Cafe, I hope you're doing well too. Hey, Pamela, good morning to you too. Uh, hey, 
Resting Fitch Base. <laughs> it's a good name. Uh, hi from Hilton Head, South Carolina. Uh, what's up, Ted? To thank. Hope you're doing well. Uh, Patricia, good morning, Liron, and everyone watching from sunny New Hampshire. Just joined your Patreon account. Oh, thank you so so much. Just now, like if I go to Patreon, I see the notification because I actually I think I checked a couple of two days, maybe two days ago or something like that, and I have seen uh, that quite a few people joined. So thank you so so much for that. Uh, much much appreciated. Um, let's see here. Lost my chat. There we go. Thank you so much though for joining and everyone else. Check it out. I have uh, promised myself that I'll uh, push more of that. I basically, so my Patreon has been there for a while just for people who want to donate um, because people ask me about it. So the thing that really supports these videos is if you buy a course or something like that or buy a painting, that will be amazing. And then if you want something that's a little, you know, lower key uh, and um, could be a lower amount of money than you can do like a dollar donation a month or two dollars and that actually adds up um so if you do that i'd be forever grateful and it should be uh in the description box did i edit the description for the video i i said i would but i don't remember let me check if it's there i think it should be there um no 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 just curious what I put there because I don't know. Yeah, okay, okay. It's there. The Patreon's there. So if you want to check it out, the link is in the description box below. And I will uh, ask you if you can take a moment and just drop a like uh, on this live stream. I know sometimes it's not as con convenient from the phone or whatever, but if you can do that, that'll be hugely appreciated. will help more people hear my answers to your questions. Um, Ralph says, uh, Ralph from Maryland. Hey, how are you doing? Paula Campbell, good morning. Looking forward to lots of art talk. Hello from Yorktown, Virginia. Thank you for being here. Hey, Archidream, uh, hello. Hope you're doing well. Hey, Tanga, hope everything is well. White Reza, how are you doing? Uh, Eliza Dalich. Oh, okay. Oh, nice. So it's Dalich or Dalich. Do, am I, do I pronounce the E sound or just go Dalich? Let me know <laughs> to my best. Uh, Dulwich Hill. That's cool. Uh, Mark, another Luron Marathon Q&A coming up. Hola, Mark from, uh, from Mark in Madrid. Thank you so much. And Mark, I actually have a little task wrote down for myself to, if I get the chance to be near Zikim or to paint something that has to do with Zikim, I'll, I'll remember you. Uh, Brinka, hi. I'm unable to catch these live streams often, but I try to watch them later on, hoping I can slowly improve my drawings. Yeah, thank you so much. And it's been a while since I did one on drawing, so that's a good reminder i'll do one hopefully soon um i did do a lot of um drawing studies figure studies manga drawing today it was really fun after a, about a week that i haven't gotten the chance to that was really really fun um you can see it in the instagram stories if you haven't by the way Sophia, I found your channel one or two weeks ago, and i think it will help me a lot when i get back to our color cool yeah yeah there's so much there like no matter your level and experience, and if you're going back to watercolor, if it's if your first time, uh, all of that um, kind of get in the loop. There's actually a playlist on the channel for big watercolor painting beginners exercise, something like that. That's a good one to check out uh, when getting started. Uh, Ralph, what pencil do you use to sketch before watercolor painting? So I actually have one here, just kind of simple one like this, number two, medium. Cheapest, simplest, the one you can get everywhere. This I just sharpened for uh, for sketching exercises. So I made it, you see the tip is a little longer and I use um, sandpaper just to get it really sharp. So that's that. I also use like mechanical pencils where you load the lead and you don't have to sharpen. Uh, that's good for smaller details. Um, sometimes I find that it has a hard time with very rough paper texture. And for that, I will use just this kind of a pencil, but nothing nothing fancy, really. Um, maybe I should explore, explore some other options, because I do know there are some better tools so that I won't have to sharpen, where it's just a lid and you can, kind of like a mechanical pencil, but with a thick lid, right? Then you can take more, more of it out and just sharpen that with maybe sandpaper, and then you don't have to do the whole um, exacto knife or something, you know, to get rid of the wood from the pencil. So yeah, maybe that will happen. Uh, Dragonfly Art Cafe. I have a question. How do you practice composition? Uh, what kind of practice would you suggest to someone who has no vision for composition can paint? That's a great, great question. I actually have an interesting answer for you. I don't think I ever said that. So it's an interesting take, maybe. Well, let me take a sip, dramatic sip. 
one thing that I think will really help you is to, once you finish a painting, to really analyze it. Look at it and ask yourself, like, what don't I like about it? What would I want to improve in terms of anything, whatever it is? Now, very often you'll find that things bug you and their placement. You're like, I like this, but it should be more to the right or it should be more to the left. If you will watch, I think it's the next video based on the live stream where I painted the Vietnam view, one of the things I realized only by looking at the painting afterwards was how I did a lot of, sorry, a lot of things were too um, symmetrical. So I have two groups of trees in the background and then two, and then the river and too many things were kind of repetitive. So one of the things you'll discover if you look at your paintings after you completed them, immediately after and maybe a couple of days later is, things will bug you. Now, you won't necessarily even know how to change them, but they will jump at you and tell, tell you, oh, I don't really like this. This doesn't work. That's a sign that something is there for you to work on compositionally, right? Um, so that would be a big thing to go back and look at. And, and if you take a bit of a distance between the painting process and looking at them, that's even better sometimes. So take a few days a week, maybe even take out a painting you did a couple of months ago, that can really, really help. Other than that, there are some best practices, uh, but I don't really practice them. I don't actually sit down. And I did a bit of it in the past. Like I'll take a, so here's a good one, just a quick one. You just draw a rectangle like this, and then you start dividing it into different sections using vertical and horizontal lines, but you always try to avoid halves. So you basically are left with something like, let me show you. So that's your square, right? And then you divide it. So like this, okay? It's not down the middle. And then you try, let's say, divide it with a horizontal line. Like this. See, not everything, but just one of the pieces that were created. And then maybe use a diagonal line, right? and then use another diagonal line. And here I go, I hit the middle, right? So, uh, which is not, which is to be avoided, right? But the, the thing is, a good kind of best practice is just to avoid centers and that because that can create repetitiveness. So if you're able to avoid middle, you'll sometimes get a bit of a better result like this. Um, the thing is, a couple of things to avoid is like this corner, I wouldn't want these to meet here. Why? Because it's the border of the sketch. And usually if you have a strong focal point on the border of the sketch, it's a mess. It directs your viewer's attention straight to the frame. You don't want that. So that's an example. Repetitive patterns, you want to avoid that. And that doesn't mean you can't have any repetitive patterns, but you need to sometimes break them off with something that is non-repetitive, right? So I hope that makes sense. Now, another way to practice it is before you start a painting, you start jotting down the placement of everything, but do a bunch of iterations. So for example, let's say you have a, a um, let's say a cityscape and buildings. So you do this, this is your frame, and then you go, okay, here is my cityscape, right? So that's one, I actually have a video on it. And then say, what will happen if I use a, portrait orientation. So you draw the same kind of a thing, but in portrait. And look at what happens here. The building's dead in the middle and you're like, mm, maybe I don't like it as much. So you do another one. And this time you place the building off to maybe one side and you're like, oh, cool. That looks more interesting. What looks better, this one or the top one, right? This gives more the feeling of a cityscape. This one's more of a, let's focus on the building and the sky. And then you slowly develop an understanding for it. But like everything else, it comes down to painting a lot and then looking at your paintings. But you have to paint a lot and you have to think before you start the painting and, and try different formats and see what works, right? So I hope those two cents help. Um, but great, great question. Uh, maybe it warrants a completely separate video. Uh, Cat H, is it realistic to hope to go from beginner to being able to sell our work or work as an artist if you're starting in your third? Yeah, of course, of course. That's that's perfectly okay. Plenty of people have done it too. Um, I wouldn't worry at all about the um, arbitrary numbers like age. Um, what you do need to take into consideration, of course, is like the usual best practices of life, right? Can you afford it? 
right? If you're if you have a family, someone you take care of, you have to be able to do that kind of a thing, take a break, take a hit to the income. Um, if you can do it on the side at first and not go full time, that's great. You know, <clears throat> all of these considerations that are very important. Um, so aside from that, um, I would say it's definitely possible. I started what is considered in an age that's considered relatively late. It's not super late. I started when I was, I started seriously when I was 23 or maybe something like yeah, 23, I think, which is sounds young, right? That's pretty young, but I had three years of military and in any other place I could get started right out of college. And many people draw as kids and continue drawing their entire lives, right? And I drew as a kid, but I did not continue consistently. See what I mean? There's always like someone who had more time, more of a runway, more experience, doesn't matter. Uh, you can catch catch up to a lot of the skills very fast, but you have to apply yourself uh, and work really hard. It's not easy. But it is realistic. And I think for that case, you will need at some point external help, whether it's sending me your paintings for reviews here on the channel or taking like a one on one lesson with someone um, just to break through some sticking points. Mostly it's, you know, doing a one on one or taking having a, a private lesson with a teacher. To me, that comes later. That's why I have all the free videos, because there's a lot you can learn on your own. And people say, you know, you develop bad habits, blah, blah, blah. Yes, maybe. But if you get started and you build some experience, you'll actually know what to ask the teacher and you'll make a lot more of that one on one thing, uh, preferably in person, I think. Uh, so, yeah. That's my kind of a couple of takes. I hope that gives some uh, encouragement. It's definitely 30s, 40s. To me, it's like if you if you have a couple of years, you're good. Um, uh, Archana or Arcana? I'm not sure. Patil, hello from uh, hello from India. Thank you for this opportunity. My question is about value. How to improve in value in transparent watercolor? Yeah, that's actually the way you phrase that question is really good um, <clears throat> because of the. Just a second. I got a message that I need to maybe respond to. Um, just one second. Sorry about that. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, it's good that you phrase it using the transparent watercolor phrase because that's really difficult. So I'll give you like one because there's a lot and I have a lot of videos on values. I'll give you one very... Um, targeted advice. Print the thing you want to match the value to and see the value more accurately and then use one of those viewfinders, right? That I use the squares that you use to just see a small part of the scene. Um, I have a couple of videos on the topic. You can search the channel, but print it out so you can see it side by side with your watercolor paper because it's very hard to gauge the value from a screen, especially because the screen is bright, the paint is transparent, the the paper is sometimes more tinted than the screen. So it's just a mess. Print out a photo in black and white and use that viewfinder. Move it around the, the photo reference, whatever it is. You can even just grab a magazine or something like that and try to match the value of what you see. And just do that constantly again and again and again and again. Uh, I think that's the best way to improve. Um, but yeah, I hope it helps. So let me know if you, anyone, uh, you or Archana and everyone else, if you have a follow up to a question, just let me know. Uh, Joanne Labelle, Haley Ron Joanne from, uh, from Canada. Question With teaching as much as you have lately, how much have you learned, either about yourself or your art? That's a good question. Um, about myself, I actually I think I learn on a regular basis because um, I do daily kind of personal growth time. I have that every morning I try. <clears throat> if I don't get it in the morning, I do it later on where I meditate for a while. I write down um, and I do a couple of other exercises. Um, and that really helps me in the long run to at least stay on the path of personal growth. Um, I learn new things every day. It doesn't mean I find solutions to problems, but I learn a lot. Um, about art, yeah, that's tough. It's always a tough balance. You know, the more you create content, the less you can just paint for yourself. And that's a very big challenge. And like always, I've been considering from time to time to um, lower the intensity on the YouTube channel. Maybe go move to two videos a week, 
know, one live stream, one video, or you know, maybe just one weekly video. Um, and I keep kind of moving in between those. The the usually the conclusion I get to is that I can become more effective still in my time management. And if I manage my time correctly, I should have enough time to paint for myself. Um, that being said, I had like a six month period where I felt like I wasn't growing much in my art, and that ended about um, I would say a month ago. Now, I don't know exactly uh, what happened but it just ended and now i'm i feel like i'm really on my path so much much better um but yeah it is a challenge you know as you um focus a lot on filming that takes a lot of the focus away so you have to learn how to balance that out uh miranda bs could you please elaborate the process of painting roses yeah i can do a video on that i think it's like it's not a verbal thing i'll do a video on it i have one but i don't really like it so i'll do a new one i'll write it down uh Staline. Um, which waterproof fine liner pens do you use? I've been investigating the ones I own to find the ones that work with alcohol and inks and markers don't always work with watercolor. Yeah, you're correct. I actually don't have a good one, unfortunately. All of my waterproof so-called uh, are not waterproof. I found that most of them do get smeared very easily. I don't have a good uh, answer for that. I do know that the Sakura Micron Pigma should be good. To me, they weren't. Sorry about that. I wish I had a better answer. Mark, hey, Leron, uh, many good artists are self-taught, but what would you say has been the three most significant steps you've made to improve your confidence and technical ability with watercolor? Three most significant steps. One is practicing a lot. So when I got started, first year was three hours a day every day, which may not be a lot if you're just painting your entire life, but understand that I was trying to build a business around my art too. Um, so that's the first one I would say. To improve confidence you know that's a good question to improve con actually i think sharing my art improved my confidence funny enough because i learned what the what's the way people perceive my art um so i think that's that would be a good one now i will give you one for technical ability and that is working on techniques individually so i'm a big fan of if there's a technique that challenges you practice doing just that if you can don't do finished paintings that's of course you have to do that too but Carve out time to just practice, you know, doing an even wash, doing a gradated wash, doing dry brush, and just do that with the intention of doing that, not as a finished painting. So that will be, I guess, the three top things. Uh, there are a lot more, and I should maybe do like best practices for watercolor beginners video. That's actually a good idea too. That's why I love these live streams. I get tons of ideas for videos. Best practices for watercolor uh, beginners. I don't know why the white balance is so annoying here and I can't control it manually. It keeps changing on me. Um, Crozem, I have uh, not white balance, uh, <laughs> uh, exposure. I always have that issue of switching those words. Crozem, I have a passion for the Mediterranean. I will make more art of that area. Yeah, that's actually a great um, area. You know, the old Greece views are just beautiful. Uh, Italy as well. Uh, Mark, yeah, no worries. I get that's a common uh, typo. Uh, hey, Marjorie, hope you're doing well. Hey, Ajit, hi, Leron, love from India. Why don't you prefer realistic art? Have you explored it? Yeah, sometimes I like it and enjoy it. Um, I'm more of an impressionistic kind of fellow. <laughs> if I can get it impressionistically, a la prima, one go and still have it look realistic from far, that's a process and a type of creation I enjoy more. With that being said, once every couple of months, I really feel the desire to create something more realistic. And then I usually do that and kind of scratch that itch. And then I'm good for a couple of other months. I have nothing against it. Um, I like it. Now, to look at, I still am a big fan of impressionism more than realism. But honestly, I have gotten the chance to look at realistic art from up close. When you see the physical thing, it's a different experience, definitely. People say that about my paintings, that it's completely different from, from when you look at the real thing. So I guess that's, you know, I'm much more open with my with the styles I enjoy when I see the thing in front of me, even abstract art. When I see it physically, which is something I barely create myself, right? When I see it in front of me in a museum, I'm much more open to it. So yeah, uh, grab how to hold a pencil. So two ways, one is like this and another is like that. That's the one I've been enjoying recently. That's the one I do for anatomy studies and sometimes even for processes. The upper grip from above, watch Proko's video on that. P-R-O-K-O. -O. Uh, it's useful to learn. Very useful to learn. 
resting fit base uh, for large white uh, subjects, house, church. Is it better to not paint the white area or use white paint? If it depends, how do you decide? Um, I like to skip if I can, right? And then I use white paint just if I have no choice. Um, but I think it comes down more to the process you enjoy and how big the area is, right? If the area is really, really big, then it's I guess it's easier maybe to paint around. I'm not sure. It depends on the cons the, the the composition, how the the scene is structured. Um, if you want to send me a specific scene, I'll be happy to look at it and let you know how I would approach it. Um, that would be I think the easiest to answer that question because it can go a, uh, a lot of ways. I like to do a combination of both. Uh, Johannes, I noticed you recently used a new watercolor paper. Yes, so I've been using a bit of Bao Hong. I wanted to say Bauhaus, Bauhong uh, rough paper that has a really strong texture. And then I've also been using a bit of hot press. I'm experimenting. Um, the rough paper is, I think it's better for larger pieces, especially because of the, that strong texture. It's a great thing to have the texture, but it does interfere sometimes with the details. I got it to work with the Bu uh, Budapest scene, um, but it can be a bit tricky. But yeah, I enjoy I enjoy it. Kind of trying to sorry, Gurub. Uh, um, I don't know why it sent those messages tons of times. I'll have to put you in timeout if it continues. But it looks like it doesn't, so that's good. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, sorry, we were here. I enjoy experimenting once in a while. That's that connects to how to improve on the long over the long run. You have to continue experimenting, breaking your own patterns. I bet there's like. 20 things I'm doing just out of habit that I could break and still get good results and maybe improve. So it's a good thing considering once in a while. Uh, Louis, what can you suggest for beginners in the watercolor art business, i.e. having an audience, how to market your work, how to make your themes and styles consistent, etc.? That's a lot of questions. You know what? I'm going to screen I'm going to screen capture your question. So Louis, let me let me do this actually. Let me ask you a follow-up. What's your, um, if, if that's something you're trying to do, can you let me know in the chat, what's your biggest, currently biggest frustration or challenge around that, around that very same thing? Like uh, beginner, beginning in the watercolor art business, what's like your biggest pain point? Is it getting to people? Is it selling your artwork? What's the thing that really bugs you about it? I'll, I'll try and, and give more specific advice for that. And I may, uh, it's a great topic for a video. So I actually screenshotted it so that I can see the question later. That's actually a really good idea. Um, so let me know. And just to kind of give maybe a quick answer. So I have a really good cop-out answer. You have to dive in. Like, like a pool, you have to dive in head first and commit to doing it. Uh, it's a decision thing. If you decide that you're gonna do it, so you're gonna spend enough time on your craft and you're gonna spend enough time on... Let me give you an example. A lot of people give up way too fast about the whole business thing. So today I, I sat for like three hours, I think, straight, just dealing with, I'm gonna build a new website. That's one of the things I actually wanted to talk to you about. It's a good connection. I wanted to build. I want to build a new website that is like the main hub for my con for not for my content, but for me as a brand, right? The Liran Konski website, where I'm gonna have my blog properly, my podcast properly, um, <clears throat> a few uh, personal blogs. Um, connecting to the gallery, connecting to the courses, showing all my products in one page, showing all the tools I like to use, everything in one place. Today, eight, nine years into the business, eight, I don't know, 2013, so seven, eight, so about eight, eight to nine years into my business, I, and I built tons of websites on WordPress and other, and I still sat down for like three hours just to figure out what platform I'm going to build this website on. Is it going to be a WordPress website? Is it going to be on like a website builder like Squarespace or Wix or all of these crap? I'm not going to probably use these. Pardon me. because Not because they're crap as a product, not enough customization. So I spent like three hours just on that and I still don't have an answer. After this live stream, I'm going back to research. So you have to dedicate the time for it. You know, if if you give up because you don't find a solution right away or stuff like that, then you're doomed before you even got started, which is why I say you have to dive in decision level head first and commit to doing it. Um, if you're not going to put in extremely long hours into it and work hard and not have fun for a long time, for a lot of the time you work, you it's just 
unlikely you'll get there. You will get there. You know, working for yourself, being independent is very rewarding, but it, you pay the price. Um, so that's my kind of two cents. What happens if I start a message? Like, what's it gonna do? Will it show it on the on the live stream? Because I have the, the ability to start. And I'm like, maybe I'll start all the questions I need to check uh, check out later. So I don't know. Let me. I'm gonna open up the live stream for my own sheer uh, curiosity. Let's see here. I don't think it does anything. Whatever. I started. Let me know if you see it. Uh, great question. Let me know as a follow-up what the thing that really bugs you. I'll try and address it in a video. Uh, Frank, uh, good morning from Colombia. Thank you for being here, Frank. Uh, John, uh, Liron, hope my DM question on Instagram made sense to you and how you use your mixing area with same color. Uh, also, I will DM on Discord regarding hard press. Yeah, sorry, I haven't seen it yet. Uh, so it, uh, it probably made sense that I just need to answer it. Um, sorry about that. I'm always slow. Uh, Monique, hi from New York City. Uh, Fernanda, uh, learning a lot from your videos. Cheer from Brazil. Thank you so, so much. Very happy to hear. Eliza, I love the boat scene behind you. Similar to the boat video I saw recently, I was amazed where you brightened the top rail after getting the value as a gray. Is that due to an opaque uh, cadmium red? Oh, yes. After uh, getting the value as gray. Yeah, and it was kind of a, a muted red initially, right? So I actually used Pyrrol Scarlet right out of the tube. That color is just fantastic. So here's the thing, and I've been talking about it um, in one of the lessons I did recently. Um, and I saw a good video on this topic. So every color has the ideal point where it's the brightest, not the lightest, not the most saturated, the brightest, which is kind of a combination of both. So if you look at where it says right now in the live stream, uh, Eliza, right? Right here. That red is very bright. It's saturated, yes, but it's also very bright um, here. And this green, not as bright. It's still pretty bright, actually, but not as bright. I'll do a video on the topic. It's a separate, completely separate thing. But basically, think of the brightest version of a color, like the, the one that looks the strongest. The color looks very saturated, but it's also not dark. Because with watercolor, to get the color to be stronger, you need to add more paint, less water, right? But when you add more paint, you also darken it. So the question is, how can you make it more saturated while not darkening it? So you can't really, because it's not like oils and other mediums, every color has that point of maximum brightness. And for example, quinacridone rose, which is the red I've been using for most of this boat scene, is when you darken it, it's not as bright. The more you dark, if you look at it on the palette, I can actually show you and you will see it. On the palette, this is the quinacridone rose right here. And it's a very, it's beautiful red, violet, right? It's a very strong one too, but look at how dark it is on the palette. So when it's at its strongest mix, it's very dark. It's not bright at all. And look at this pyrrol scarlet. This is the strongest it will get because what you see on the, on the, in the pans is the strongest the paint can get basically. Look at how bright, meaning it's light and saturated at the same time it is. So it has a, a lighter value. The, the lighter value side of the scale for it will give you the brightest result. So what's great about Pyrrol Scarlet is that its brightest result is when you use it straight out of the tube, when it's the strongest. If I use a uh, quinacridone rose straight out of the tube, it's going to be dark and it's not going to be bright. It's not going to be strong. It's not going to be like a blinding strong brightness. Um, I have to define brightness. I know I do. I'll, I'll do it in a separate video. But basically, this paint, Pyrrol Scarlet, Pyrrol Orange would do the same thing. Cadmium Orange, Cadmium Red Light. Their strongest saturation plus lightness is when you use them straight out of the tube. And that's super convenient because you can just put it over what was there, right? So it was Pyrrol Scarlet by Daniel Smith to answer your question. That, that was a very long uh, answer to just a short question. So sorry about that. Um, hey, pounds and dollars, how are you doing? Uh, hey, Patricia, I joined your Patreon account a few days ago. Yeah, so I remember seeing it. Cool. Thank you so, so much. Yeah, I saw it. I saw the notification. Uh, really, really appreciate you and everyone else who supports me there. Um, Olivier, hi, Liron. The world is in the world. 
is in. I'm not sure what that means. Let me know. Hi, everybody. Uh, hey, Vishnu, how are you doing? Um, I, I remember you. Uh, Ellen, I've always painted chocolate box type of paintings, but have been playing with splash paintings lately. Have you any experience? I'm actually not sure what chocolate box type of paintings means. Let me know. I'm curious to hear. Is it more like small objects? Like when people draw their food or stuff like that? I, I honestly don't know. So let me know and maybe I can give you a better uh, answer. I did experiment a bit with splashes and going a little crazy and combining it with a more realistic style. That's great fun. I think experimentation is key no matter what. You try and try and you know slowly you get it. Um, Paula Campbell, what do you mean by a playlist for beginners? Uh, yes, it's mine. Let me find it for you. We run playlist. I don't know if I can find it like this. Watercolor beginners. I'm going to drop a link in the chat. I'm really bad at typing and it doesn't find playlists. So let me see if I can I search for a playlist type playlist. There we go. Watercolor painting exercise, beginner tips and techniques. There we go. So I'm going to drop a link to the video and playlist. Um, and it's kind of consolidating all of my videos that are meant usually for beginners, yes. And they show a technique. Not It's not just a painting process, but they also teach you a concept. Um, so a lot like a video talking about how to get a smooth uh, gradated wash, for example, will go there. Whereas just a process will not. Um, so yeah, I hope that's helpful. I just put it in the chat. Hi, Diane Don. Thank you for uh, sharing your technique from Green Bay. Thank you so, so much for being here. Uh, Krozum, have you ever used watercolor pencils? No, and I actually got a um, a comment today on Instagram. Let me check because um, I think I remember who it was from. Yeah, from Henny. Um, I got a great comment on Instagram that I should use different, uh, like have a symbol to know how dark or light a part of the drawing is. And then I was like, why not use colored watercolor pencils? And then if I draw a shape, I can use the value that it should be in. So that's a genius idea. And I may do that. I may start. Um, <clears throat> I think I have like one or two watercolor pencils. I never really got why, what's their point. But then I saw a couple of processes with them and I get it. They melt into what you paint and it, work, it looks a little more holistic, I guess. So I may do that. Uh, but I haven't, I don't have a lot of experience um, with them. So I don't really have anything to share. Uh, only the fact that I still haven't gotten how to use them, but that was a great suggestion. I may use it for that. You got it, Ralph. Help. Happy I could help. Dragonfly Art Cafe. Can you try Faber Castle two millimeter lead? Oh, you can try. Yeah. Okay, let's see. That's the one I was referring to, right? Faber Castle lead holder. And you, you recommend the two millimeter? That'll be interesting. Yeah, I need, yeah, exactly. Something like that would be good. Yep, that will be a good thing. Two millimeter though sounds a little, a little too thin. I think I need something more serious. Um, I'll look into it. I think what I have right now is about that size. Um, but yeah, great idea to just check out the products that Faber Castle has because I was I always it was always in the heavy sketching aisle and I was never into like heavy you know charcoal and all of that. So I just skip it. But that's a good idea. Marjorie, my aunt uh, Norelli uh, Katsu has taken painting and jewelry classes for 65 years. My question, how does an artist take classes and remain true to his her style? Um, that's a good question. Remain true to their style. I don't think, I don't assume that taking classes will sway you away from your style. Let me tell you what I think. If you paint a lot, outside the classes, then you will develop your own independent style. You get what I'm saying? Um, so if you're just going to the classes and that's the only painting or drawing action you get, yes, you may kind of fall into a pigeonhole of doing the same thing over and over again. But if you devote enough time to creating yourself, that can really help. Now, one more thing I will say is trying to do master studies really really helps what do i mean by that oh here i have a note explaining um uh, you can uh, you can start oh okay so starring just it's just for me to see what comments were maybe i want to discuss later on okay that's an interesting feature <laughs> sorry about that um so i was gonna say yeah doing master studies can really help because 
it forces you to try a different style. When you try a different style, you open up your mind to doing something differently. And if you do that enough, I don't think you'll become a copycat. I think you'll learn what you like about someone's style, incorporate it into your own work, and you'll remain true to yourself. That's what I think. Now, if you feel like you're taking classes and you move away from your style or you feel like you don't like what you're doing as much, take a break. It's perfectly okay. Take a break and just create on your own and see what happens. You know, a lot of it is just experimentation. And I think a lot of the style thing is very fluid. So if you just stop doing something, your style will auto correct and fix itself. So I don't try to, I don't, I don't care too much about external influences such as uh, classes. I think it's more dependent on you and what you do outside of class. Uh, Electro can do you use watercolor or ink tense pencils in your work? No, I don't have them. Um, don't know anything about them. I heard the name, but I don't know much about them. Um, Ellen, I've always painted chocolate. Oh yeah, that's the same one. So let's see. Um, hey Chuck, how are you doing? Um, when I took classes, my style became so influenced. Yeah, so that's the thing. Get a variety of influences. Try and do studies of other artists. Now that you say that, it makes sense. Definitely, if you just do classes and you don't practice enough on your own or try a different style on your own, you can fall into that trap. But again, I don't assume it will happen because I do a lot of... Like, even if I would take maybe a class here or there, even if I do even just a DVD I learned from, I then go and move into something else and it kind of resets me. Tattoo Tank, I've been enjoying gouache better than watercolor here lately, it seems, but more uh, opaque. Have you ever tried it? And have you ever used acrylics? I have used acrylics. There are a few kind of paintings around uh, the house that I did. Um, I just didn't enjoy it as much. I like the flow of watercolor, and that's something that I just I enjoy so much more. But if you enjoy gouache, go for that, you know. Uh, that'll be the best thing you can do. If you really enjoy something, go in that direction. You know, sometimes I have this urge to try something different, like acrylics. I did it. I tried it. Now, if, if I if I would have avoided that, I'd keep wondering, what's it like? What's it like? Maybe, maybe I should do acrylics instead of watercolor. But the moment I gave myself permission to try it out and I scratched the itch, I did maybe two or three, not even in a row, over the course of maybe six months or even a year, um, I got it out of the system, you know, and I'm like, it's good. I'm happy that I did those. I like the way they look, but thank God for watercolor because I like that more, uh, you know. So if you enable yourself to go in the direction that feels natural and experiment, I think only good can come out of that. Whether you discover you liked your original style medium more or you discover that you like the new thing more, you know. Hey, Sean V, English son. <coughs> hey Josephine, how are you doing? Hello from Gloomy. You need to continue. <laughs> uh, Marina, how are you doing? Uh, Mark, for the person that asked about composition, I can say I found the YouTube channel called Ian Roberts. I think I'm familiar with Ian, uh, who paints in oils, but his insights into composition are absolutely on point. Cool, cool, cool. Ian Roberts. Prema. Uh, I've tried, I've read that real artists, real artists, <laughs> I, I, whenever I read that term I'm like uh let's see what it says real artists make their art from their inner stillness do you do the same you're on no <laughs> that's why i dislike sentences with real artists who's to say what a real artist is what's inner stillness you know i can tell you that the answer is probably yes but is it yes for everyone nope should it be yes for everyone no to me that probably applies because what i do is i don't here's the key Here's what I don't do. I don't sit down, try and get still, meditate, and once I'm still, paint. That's not going to be really impossible and, and a silly kind of weird way of approaching it. Let me just say that. Here's what I do. I sit down and paint as much as I can, whenever I can, whenever I schedule the painting sessions. And every time I sit down and paint, I become still, you know, thoughts leave my head. I'm fully in the process, whether I'm painting, whether I'm drawing, same effect, plan air inside, same. Whenever I create, my mind goes poof, which is what it's supposed to do, right? It's performance. You're in the moment. Um, so that's how I do it, right? And I, even I use the word, that's how it's supposed to be. But is it? 
do all people create like that? I don't know. Uh, I don't think there's an overarching, like, that's the way to do it. Real artists versus fake artists. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Eliza, for composition, look at the channel Ian Roberts. That's the second. That's the second time it's mentioned. So now I'm gonna uh, look it up and check it out myself. Ian Roberts. Let's see. I'll watch a video or two later. Um, <clears throat> where is that? Okay. Um, Seeing is forgetting. Oh, nice, nice. Okay, it looks like a very interesting channel. I'll definitely watch it. Um, and I'm gonna subscribe. Oh, I'm already subscribed. Um, subscribe to almost any painting channel that you'll throw at me, but I just don't remember the videos themselves. Um, Patricia, Edgar Payne's composition of outdoor painting is an excellent reference guide. Thumbnail, examples of good composition elements and also elements that should not be used. Interesting. Edgar Payne. Hmm. Manuel says hi from Spain. Eliza Ian Roberts. Yeah. We went over that. Patricia, S-shaped curves are good interesting also overlapping elements like mountain peaks i refer to it often yep oh so we're not just now basically talking about composition right uh, i'm way behind on the chat as always uh yeah micron pigma are supposed to be um waterproof as i mentioned i had a bad experience with them probably because they were fake i don't know i got them off of ebay and they just weren't um josephine oh gloomy niagara okay yes yes <laughs> uh, eliza composition after is st I stand back, does it carry the contrast and shut eyes really tight, open eyes and see where your eye goes first. Repeat then, uh, where does your eye go after? Yeah, so it's a good way to analyze your own composition. Yep. Um, very happy to hear you're doing well, Chuck. Uh, hey, Anna, hello from Portugal. Uh, another great video on composition, the fundamentals of landscape, Art Camp 3, preview with Knob Bradley. I love those preview videos. Let's see. Preview. I'm going to look it up because I'm going to check these things out later. Preview. Noah Bradley uh, composition. Composition. Many times I would want to check things out while we're live streaming, but then it's, oh, yeah, that looks good. Yeah. So more digital, I guess. Um, I don't think I know Noah Bradley. Yeah, I'm not surprised. So you found one I wasn't subscribed to. That's good. Um, Dragonfly, thanks for answering my question. I've been struggling with composition. I can recreate from photographs, but I cannot create a composition. Anything that I create jumps off paper looking out. Yeah, that's the thing. That's hard for me to, you know, making things up. Um, it's definitely a challenge because there's a lot that goes on into that. Um, I think if you really paint a lot and start practicing inventing, then it will work. Um, I'm not even at a point, honestly, where I feel confident inventing almost anything. Maybe just a head. <laughs> uh, Martin, hi, Liron. Thanks very much for the great videos. What are your thoughts on painting with the brush? As David Hollow and Hazel uh, Sloan. Hazel, uh, is it Sloan or Sloan? I don't remember. David Hollow, painting with the brush. So what does it mean, painting with the brush? I'm not sure. Let me see if I can pull up like a video that shows that. David. Painting. I'm not sure what you refer to. You're not talking about David Howell, right? Because David Howell, uh, I don't remember him painting with. Let me know and let's see Hazel. Hazel. So I'm familiar with Hazel, of course, but um, I love Hazel's work, but I'm not sure what you mean by with the brush, like. Uh, like as, like in the style. Let me know, like clarify if you can. Eliza, for value checks, I take a photo of my work in progress regularly on my iPhone 6 in color, change the iPhone settings to Silverstone or Noir. Yeah, there's also black and white, I think, just a generic black and white that really helps. Um, and as you, as you said, I have no clue uh, what to change, how to change it. Okay, yeah. <laughs> no worries. Uh, Dwayne, question, which is more important for watercolor, colors or tones? For me, it's I guess tones, you mean values. For me, it's values, um, but many will maybe disagree. You know, colors, you can create a lot with colors, including depth. Um, but to me, I like values more for that purpose. Hey, James, how are you doing? Hey, Liron, very nice to be here with you and all the other viewers. Thank you so much. Uh, why, Teresa, accurate drawing, accurate values, colors don't matter. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I'm like as 
clear cut as him. Uh, I do think colors and you know stuff they look good, right? And when Stan demos something in colors, it's like pff, mind blown, right? So it's really really good. So it's not like they're not they don't matter at all. And he's very good at using colors. Uh, but yeah, for a sense of realism and three dimensionality and depth, I find values to be a little more convenient for me. And I find them more important. If I drop the values um, or if I drop the colors, I tend to like the dropped colors more. Uh, even though you, some paintings I have seen that are quite flat value-wise and most of the depth is created by the um, colors, can be really great. Eliza, I love black Stettler permanent fine Lumo color. Um, first right waterproof. Okay, that's a great suggestion because I had no idea. Uh, Lisa, good day from Colorado. How is everybody? Hope you're doing well. Um, and thank you so much for anyone who joins right now. If you joined late to the live stream, feel free to ask your questions. We'll try and go over everything. Um, even though, as usual, I have a lot of work to do. So if we'll maybe in 20 minutes or so, we'll try and wrap up. Uh, even though it's super short, I know it's like an hour and 20 minutes is uh, less than usual. Uh, but yeah, I have a lot of things I want to still finish today and a lot of preparations for next week's vacation. Um, but yeah, anyone who just joined, if you can take a moment and just drop a like here, uh, it'll make me very happy. Uh, you'll get more people in the stream and quite a lot of people are already here. So much, much appreciated. Um, so let's see, design diaries. How to decide upon the medium and the kind of art to make? I'm confused. Jack of all trades kind of situation. Interesting. So what, what are some of your favorites? Is there anything that stands out to you that you enjoy doing more and that you get better results with? I'd say go in that direction and just kind of feel, feel it, get a feel for it, right? Um, if you're just kind of getting started and you're trying to let me arrange myself and you're just trying to learn like what you enjoy and what you like then the best way to do it is really to experiment a lot um and don't feel like you're obligated to stick to one thing you know and you can do mix um i'm starting to do some elements of mix um i think i'll add more acrylics to my watercolors actually uh patricia i use the etcher black graphic pens set of 16 all size and brush pens great size mm, good great suggestions i'm not a big fan of pen and watercolor at the moment so i don't need it but that's a great great answer to the question so thank you so much to anyone who shared their uh, uh favorite watercolor proof waterproof pens uh big c nash highly run regarding shadow areas i've seen many people paint them at the start where they see them rather then the end. What are your thoughts on that technique? For me, I understand that method. Yeah, and I've seen a couple of videos that show that, <clears throat> and that allows you, instead of glazing, just to put them immediately in, and you can get the right value and get a vibrant color because you don't glaze, you have less of a risk of kind of graying them out. I love that technique. I love that, and I enjoy painting more directly whenever I can or feel like it, so I'm all for it. I forgot the name of the artist that demonstrates that, and I've seen him recently. Um, just very, very good method to achieve very vibrant shadows, I guess. Uh, there's a sketch inks like R and K sketch ink is waterproof. Oh, for a dip pen, nice. Yeah, that could be good. I do wonder how my dip pen would fare with watercolor paper, though, because um, sometimes you know it can pinch the paper, <clears throat> so that can be interesting. It's more suitable for Bristol kind of paper, thicker, you know. But that's actually a great suggestion, just buy the ink. Uh, Kimberly Hilton, hi, Leron. Happy to catch you live this morning. I enjoyed this conversation. Thank you so, so much. Ooh, I'm behind like 25 minutes on the chat. That's a disaster. Lisa, which products do you suggest to put on our watercolor art after it's done to protect it? Oh, honestly, I don't have a good one. Uh, to me, it's just a glass if I frame it, which I usually don't because the customers frame it. I wish I had a better answer. To this day, I haven't found like a good sealant, something to seal the paintings uh, that I tried myself. I got a few recommendations from people I trust, but I have never tried it myself. So I don't have a good answer. You could play around with the type of glass. Some glasses are more like UV protection. I find that it's not as important. If you want to pay a bit extra and like be more safe, then it's cool. But I find it's not that big of a deal. 
Harsh Deep Cower. Make a video on how to paint while looking at a reference. Also on how to choose correct color shades while painting. I actually have a lot of videos like this, so uh, you may want to check out like um, color matching and everything around that. If you're talking about colors, right? Not not values, I guess. Uh, thank you so much for the kind words. Uh, as for while looking at reference, that's what I do most of the time. Uh, do you want to actually see me f like from afar or like do you mean plan air? Because that's something I definitely should do more of. Uh, hopefully I will in the next couple of months. Uh, Ramesh Babu, firstly, I would like to state that your tutorials are awesome and to learn watercolor, uh, to learn watercolor paintings. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll get to the next uh, uh, message, hopefully. It's just a few moments. Uh, Rita, can you do a video on how you video your demonstrations or just share on live? Uh, yeah, um, I'll do a video on that because quite a lot of people ask me how to film I have a very weird setup. Film yourself painting. Uh, and probably there are much better setups out there. Maybe in the future I'll push my studio to be more professional. It's, it wasn't something that was that important to me up to this point. But uh, basically I have what you want is a vertical horizontal bar. You want a tripod with a horizontal bar that can go move down like that and then you put the camera on that and it comes from the side and it's above you and then it films it um and i actually put you can see it here i put a gorilla pod it's called gorilla pod over it so that i can play around with the angle but i will make a proper video uh louis convincing the audience that the price is convenient so yeah so i guess selling more okay i'll address it in a video um how to sell and i'll do a screenshot of this too so more um i'll write down Luis. yeah i'll try and address it in a future video it's a big topic so carol love your videos lessons and paintings glad to catch you live your urban landscapes have helped me tremendously oh cool that's my, one of my favorite subjects definitely like cityscapes and urban stuff kimberly i've been painting flowers lately i'm trying to figure out how to paint cool shadows on light yellow flowers do you have any tips that would be helpful Check out my video. So it's on, on yellow flowers. I did one with white flowers. The process is going to be quite simple, actually. So uh, I did this demo uh, that was very useful. Let me find it. We run florals realism, I think. What did I call it? How to paint shadows on white subjects. Watercolor floral demo. So I'll share with you the link for the floral demo right now. Kimberly. Um, so the way I did it there <coughs> was just a variety on my uh, primary colors. Now a bit of red, a bit of blue, a bit of yellow. What you will do in the case of light yellow flowers is you'll just have more yellow in everything. So when you mix your mix, just do the same thing I did, but add a bit more yellow to hint that underneath it is a yellow color. Or alternatively, do the same thing I did, but instead of using the paper white, do an initial wash tinting the florals to be yellow. That's what I would do. Uh, but check out the video. It shows just that. Uh, Zaida, hey, thank you for being here. Ramesh, did did brand of watercolor will matter for good painting? If so, which brand is best? Yeah, I have tons of brands I like. So not really one in particular, I would say. Um, Daniel Smith is my kind of go-to. Just the one I got used to. And they're very balanced all in all. Saturated colors, good quality. Um, pigments I like. Uh, got used to them, but I like also SAA. I like a bunch of them. So here's my answer to that. It doesn't matter as much. You can use cheaper ones like White Knights that are very good. I am working on creating that web page that shows all of the materials I'm using, and there there will be clear answers to all of the nuances. Uh, so you will get a lot of uh, answers to the material questions. I hope that will help. Uh, Feso, I'm not sure what that is. I'm gonna Google this just to just to know um website for artists oh okay oh to buy to build a website let's see oh yeah i know these i'm not gonna use them <laughs> i have nothing against them but i don't want my website to just be like an artist website if anything it will look more like their website in a way uh but i'm now you know what that really that really explains a lot because i recognize their logo and i've seen it on so many artists websites and i was like could it be that all of these artists use that same kind of service? You know what? I'll use it for inspiration. That's actually great. That's a great find. I had no idea they exist. That's awesome. 
would have never even found a way to look for them. That's why all of these artist websites have this as, as the icon, which is why don't they change it to their own? You know, it's called a fav icon because when you favorite it, that's the icon you see. Everyone just uses Faso's fav icon. That's incredible. What about their own brand? Well, I learned something new today. That's cool. Uh, Celine, in my collection, the pens I've found that are immediately waterproof are the Copic. Oh, Copics are good, yeah. Multiliner, fine liner, Kuretake, Zig Rider, double barrel, <laughs> double barrel, uh, and the Prismacolor uh, Premier Fine Liner. Cool, cool. That's a great for anyone who wants to search all of these. Uh, Born Again Farm Girl, hello, my creative community. Uh, Gail, yes, I agree. Lirani, your paintings are amazing face-to-face. -face. Videos just don't do justice to the nuance, like paper texture, stroke, and granulation. Yeah, it's really crazy. If there was a way to better, like, the best thing I can do, I guess, is to film them in 4K, really up close, hold them up to the camera, which I should do once in a while, probably. Um, God, I have an idea for... Uh, let's see. I have an interesting idea for a video. Maybe I'll do that. Uh, but thank you so, so much, Gail. Yeah, I remember you told me that as well. Uh, much appreciated. Yeah, I heard that so many times. Uh, Sherlyn, no question. Just saying hello from Canada. Thank you for all the videos. I have th been thoroughly enjoying watching and learning from them. Thank you so much. Um, uh, Alexa, my brother buys his WordPress templates. A great starting point. And just for each client. Yeah, yeah, that's actually a good idea. Fedco. <laughs> Uh, for domain uh, registering. Yeah, interesting. I saw today, uh, was it Pig Pigbun, I think? Pigbun, another service. There are so many of these. It's so funny. <clears throat> but yeah, um, that's. I agree. That's a good starting point. If you can get like a good template, what is it called? A theme that's actually supported and is good. The WordPress updates and it doesn't go to crap. That's my only worry about WordPress. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Jeffy Jeff, greetings and salutations to you and all. Thank you so much. Um, and I guess thank you for the perfect lessons. Thank you. Luis, another thing that bothers me about beginning in the business is how to engage with your clients. I don't have much experience as a business person. Yeah, so here's the thing. Like, I have the great privilege and benefit of being able to communicate directly with you as the audience because the whole business is my brand. And I think the communication I have with you is much more intense and frequent than many other businesses, M many other artists, let alone business owners. Um, so what I would say is just that, what we're doing right now, that's what you should be doing. I will give you like an overarching thing I learned a couple of years ago. I internalized it completely. The audience is king, no matter what. That's like, and, and I'll upgrade it. The paying customer is king. So if you build a business whose sole purpose is to serve your customers, you'll do well, no matter the niche, no matter the kind of service you provide. Okay. So if you're dedicated to understanding what provides real value to your audience, customers, whatever, you'll do well. Whether it's um, mo um, lawn mowing business or anything else, you know, if you listen to what the people say and how many businesses just have crappy customer service, like, you know, um, um, airlines, for example, stuff like that, like you make so much money and your customer support is so crappy. Even if they help you, you have to wait till they help you. They have a WhatsApp or a chat support, but you wait for hours on that chat support. Like all of these crappy things, I have the privilege of not having that happen, right? Because I can communicate more directly with you and I, I, and I don't need employees. I don't need like a bunch of people working under me and doing customer support right now. Maybe when I grow bigger, I will need that. But for now, I don't. So I'm very blessed in that regard. If you can take that mindset and just focus on your clients, you'll do well. So, for example, let me give you a good example. Uh, when I was when I used to sell my paintings, and uh, and by the way, check out that video if you haven't. I have a video on how to sell more artworks in the art fair. I did uh, for a couple of months, sold my paintings in a local art fair, very populated. A lot of people come there twice a week. Um, very intense experience to go there, carry the stuff every time, and <clears throat> set up the booth and everything, and and you know be communicative for like eight hours. Here's the thing. Whenever someone approached my booth, it would always be about them. I don't exist. I don't care. It's not like, oh, check out this painting. Check out that painting. No, it's always conversation. That's the first thing that I would do. It's just to 
get a picture of who's this person, right? Why are they stopping by? Sometimes people stop by because they do watercolors themselves. They have zero intention of buying from me. And I don't care. They stopped because they really like to paint themselves. And seeing someone who does it, maybe at a level that they perceive as higher than them, is huge. It's so fun, right? There was another watercolor painter in the in the art fair that I used to enjoy going by their booth. You actually can see uh, his painting here. That's his painting. I have another one that I need to hang up. So um, if someone approaches the booth just because they really love watercolor, and then I try and sell it to them without even listening to why they're here, that's a crappy experience, right? So they weren't a customer to begin with. But maybe someone is looking for something specific. You have to listen and ask them, what are you looking for? And then, boom, an idea. Oh, maybe you'll like this one. I had someone that was looking for, she's from India. She was looking for a gift for her dad for his birthday. And then I remember, it wasn't even a painting I put on the on the booth. I remember I had this painting of a view from India where I did not use pencil at all. And if you go to my channel and you search for a video that, that is titled "How Watercolor Pencil uh, Watercolor Painting Without Pencil Lines," I think something like that. And I just painted directly, and I didn't even plan on selling it. I had it with me like as my stock, but I, it was just in my kind of folder. <clears throat> and then I was like, "Oh, I actually have a painting of a beautiful view from India." And it was very interesting. It's one of my only paintings where I did not use a pencil. She loved that one. She just bought it. She loved the story. She loved everything about it. But had I not asked questions and listen, and I think if I'm not mistaken, she wasn't even planning on buying a painting. She was looking for a gift for her father, not a painting for her father. And because we chatted a bit, we talked a bit, she suddenly got the idea, oh, maybe I'll get him a painting. Or maybe the moment I showed her the painting, she was like, oh, that could be a good gift. My father is not even into painting, but that's something that he will enjoy, right? So always about a customer, always about what they want, always about what they need. That's how I try to run my my thing. I always try to listen. And I, I don't do a perfect job at it. People have been asking me for a long time for you know subti proper subtitles in my courses. And it's something that just is so much work that I kind of didn't even get to doing it properly. People ask for their list of tools I'm be, I've been using. I don't have that. And I'll benefit from that list, right? I'll make money from it because then I put affiliate links and people click them and buy and I get a commission. But I just didn't get around to it. So it's not like I'm doing a perfect job with it, but at least the mindset itself, diving head first and making it all about the customers. That's the big thing. Hopefully that makes sense. I went on a real like uh, side tangent there, but hopefully that answers some of your questions. And actually, uh, I don't know if you emailed me or sent me a message. Try it out. Hopefully I'll answer fast because because that's a bit of an off topic thing. It's not painting. It's something. So, you know, I can help maybe more on a kind of a personal one on one. Um, just messages here and there. Don't don't count on it because I take long to answer. But yeah, I can definitely do a video on the topic. Uh, Ramesh, which GSM paper I should use choose before watercolor? So I use 300 grams, uh, 140 LB pounds. Is that pounds or I don't know? But that's what I use. That's what serves me best. 600 is fun. It's a treat. The paint barely, the paper barely buckles, but it's more expensive, and I don't need it. You know. Uh, and asks what watercolor, why watercolor is better than oil painting. I don't know because I never did oil painting. What I can say is that I enjoy the speed, the fact that I can just paint top to bottom fast, right? I don't need to mix and then put the paint, mix again, put the paint, and it takes a long, long time, you know? That's the advantage. Uh, Faso has everything you could want in a website and they don't let them, and if they don't let them know, and they'll work. And if they don't let them know, not work. Oh, cool. Will they change the fav icon if I ask them to? Or will they leave their logo there? That's what I wonder. Uh, interesting. I don't know. Maybe I should kind of talk to them and do a more personalized package if there is such a thing. I don't know. Uh, Faso. Bold brush is great. Well, I, maybe I'll give them a try. I mean, I've seen so many of these uh, websites, you know, so many of them. So, yeah, but that's the thing. I don't feel like I'll have enough control over the thing, like the hosting and everything. And maybe it's slow. Sometimes I've a lot of their websites were super slow. So I don't want that, too. Um, and it looks like something I could create on WordPress. Good question. Louis, question. Do you have suggestions for assigning spaces? 
in your mixing palettes to save the paint by not cleaning it too much? Yes. Um, not in the mixing area, actually, but the wells, the way I place the wells. I don't know if that answers your question, but I at least try to get my yellows. Yellow, uh, where is it? Here away from my blues, if I can. I have the lemon yellow here, away from my blues. That's the one thing, but the mixing is a big mess. I uh, I mix everything in all of the mixing areas, so no, not really. Uh, Eliza, thanks so much for the explanation of Bright Pearl Scarlet over Gray. Happy I could help with that. Paula, there's awesome information about the color brightness and value. Yep, and I need to do a proper video on it. Uh, hey, Aaron, how are you doing? Hey, Daiji Shinomori. Well, I forgot to say, uh, hi, what I got on. So here it is. Hi, thank you so much for being here. Cubs win. Uh, have you done point of view drawings, i.e. hands in drawing with what's in front of I actually did that, you know? I did a couple of these, and they're really fun. I don't think I'll be able to. Maybe I could find them in my old sketchbooks. I'll look. I'll look and see. I have done them. They're really fun. And when I was a kid, that's how I would use to. Not really a kid kid, but like a teenager. If I would once in a while, once in a blue moon, draw, I would do a lot of that in the bus sometimes. Patricia, I just painted a sea turtle with lots of splashes to create water bubbles. So much fun, but I now have bubbles on my keyboard, my iPhone monitor hot. Same thing, if you would see my Mac right now, it's full of paint, full of drops of paint. I don't care. That's a, that's a true artist's uh, laptop. Uh, it's funny. Diego in Japan. Oops, sorry. Diego in Japan, thanks for the vids. You are super talented. Thank you. How long did it take you to be satisfied with your work to actually share your work publicly? I started showing very early on, but satisfaction, I think it took me like three years in watercolor to feel like I'm producing a lot of good things that I like. Now, before that, I was already producing fun things that I enjoyed, but it was more uh, like one in every five paintings I would like. One in every four paintings, sometimes one in every six, depending on how bad the current week or day was. Um, so maybe like two to three years to really find once in a while a good one that I really like. And then from there, um, maybe I'm being overly harsh. Maybe even after the first year, I started liking things here and there. Maybe, probably, probably. Uh, yeah, watercolor pencils was my gateway drug to watercolor. Interesting. Interesting. That's the first time I hear of that kind of a route into watercolor. Very interesting. Uh, Born Again Farm Girl. I really enjoy Faber Castell watercolor pencils. Okay, good. Yeah, I know Faber Castell's color, uh, colored pencils are good too, if I'm not mistaken. So watercolor as well, I guess. Uh, Diane Hunter. Hi from Thornhill, Canada. Question. The color opus not sure what opus is is color fest or is it fugitive some artists i've watched use this color in place of opera opus color i don't even know what that is opus watercolor um hmm. oh it's a brand okay right it's a brand so i'm actually not familiar so it's da vinci's huh I don't know much about it. Da Vinci, I have a serious sneeze. I have a bit of allergies in the last couple of days. Da Vinci uh, Opus watercolor. Um, let's see. So is it considered artist grade or student grade or what? I, I have no idea. And there's a bunch of like people's palettes with it. Huh. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. We'll take some research. Opus Essential watercolors. I don't want to answer if I don't know. Hmm. I can't find like a, let's see here, light fest colors. Okay, it does say it's light fest and it is vegan. That's nice. Uh, intense permanent pigments. Okay, sounds like they should be artist grade, but I don't know for sure, unfortunately. Sorry, I don't have a good answer for that. Uh, but if anyone in the chat knows, that'll be great because people here know much more than I do. Uh, Joanne, yeah, you're right. Uh, there's a fan there here in Niagara Falls. Oh, cool, cool. Uh, Eliza, in reference to style develops, the more time in the chair, the more time with the brush, the colors you love, classes show us something different, but we still do our own thing. Yep, yep, completely agree with that. Uh, Ramesh, I'm finding it difficult in matching the colors. How to make the color matching, for example, for steel vessels or any object which I select? Like if you look at it, yeah. Directly observing is hard. There are some methods to learn that I've seen with the color finder kind of thing that oil painters sometimes use to actually see if the color matches. And if you go to Mark's channel and uh, draw mix paint, 
um, draw, mix, paint, oil painting, mark, you will find it. He has a few explanations about that, but I guess my best bet would be to take a picture and look at the color in the picture and try to match it with the picture and print a picture if you can. Um, do that at least in the beginning. It is important to match the color from observation, but um, it's just sometimes hard. Yeah. Um, another thing you can do is just to try, do the color matching exercise and check, test yourself and see, were you to blue? Were you to red? Were you to yellow? Is it to purple? Is it purple enough? You know, ask yourself these questions. Um, I actually don't have a good answer for that other than check out the color matching videos. And if it's steel, then it will probably reflect everything around it and it will be a lot of gray, so it's not easy. One thing I will say is if you can use fewer colors, three colors is enough. Two is enough as well if you're using just maybe French ultramarine and um, burnt sienna or something like that, maybe a, a bit of a yellow ochre kind of... Um, which one is it? I always forget another good yellow, raw sienna. Limit the number of colors you use. That will help a lot. Patricia, do you ever use masking fluid? I use it, but always struggle with applicator bottles with the fine tips. Yeah, so I saw someone using a nib pen to apply it, and I'm going to try that because I do like, I would like the option to do it sometimes, even though I'm not a big fan of the technique, but it's just very practical, right? So I do hope to do that at some point, uh, to practice that with a nib pen. And nibs are good. You can just then peel off the excess um Masking fluid, it hardened, whereas with a brush, it's a nightmare to take it out. Um, so, yeah. And I've seen some people like Yong Chen, who has a really good watercolor channel. He uses the brush on soap, on a soap bar, and that prevents the masking fluid from getting in it. I've never tested this out. I don't know if you need a specific soap to do that, but maybe you want to check that out as well. Uh, and he has a great channel, Yong Chen. Uh, I usually give up and just use an old brush. Yeah, frustrating because that stuff is really expensive. Yeah, I get it. So try out it with a nib pen. If you have replaceable nibs, that's great because you can just throw it away if if you if it ruined it, you know. You have to be gentle though with the watercolor paper. Uh, Mauro Medina, hi, Ola from Uruguay. Cool. I've been to almost been to Uruguay. I've been to the triangle of of you know border triangle of Uruguay. Is it Uruguay? I think it is. Yeah. Uruguay, Argentina. Let me check on the map. Uruguay. I think I was. Let's see where it falls on the map. Uruguay, Argentina, and um, which one is it? I don't even remember. I'm really bad at geography. Um, and Paraguay, I think. Yeah, Uruguay, Paraguay, and Argentina. No, I got it completely wrong. Wait. So Buenos Aires, and then I remember there was like a beautiful place with view. And it was, hmm, well, I don't know where it was now, whatever, but I've been close. I've been close to visiting. Uh, Trish King, fine art. Hello from Kentucky, USA. Alan Graham, and hello yourself, Trish. Thank you for being here. Alan, sorry, chocolate box painting is a realistic painting. It's found in old chocolate. Okay, okay, wait. Now I have to check. John Constable, chocolate box. I just wonder. Or like a realist. Oh, let me see. I'm not sure. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> yeah. No, I love this style, actually. I really enjoy it. Um, now I have to remember what the question was. I don't know if I'll be able to find it. Uh, let's see here. Just give me a moment. Yeah, that's the search works really bad. So I don't know. I'll I do say I do have to say I like this style. And if you want to branch out from it, um, you can just try doing a master study. This is why I recommend master studies, because you can just try out a different style without inventing it yourself, you know. Um, you get a, a kind of a pre-made process that you can follow and it trains you in following that style so that you can later apply it to your own work from observation, right? Uh, but while my allergies are bad, I'm going to sneeze. Barbara Wooden, can you please elaborate on the concept of connecting the shapes? Is the idea to help one's eye around a painting? Yes, to simplify. The, I think the main idea for me is when you look at something, the human eye cannot possibly take in everything. So it very naturally 
sees the thing it focuses on and the rest kind of fades away. When you connect some shapes together, not everything necessarily, it helps the human, it helps to mimic the feeling of really looking at something. You don't have to do this. Plenty of artists paint all of the details equally and separate, and it works well. For me, I find that I enjoy the, the efficiency, I guess, of that process, right? The, how effective it is to paint this way because it's, I guess, just easier to go through the painting and, and, and it's faster, but that's not necessarily it. It's just I love the merging of shapes. That's why I love watercolor. You know, it's very hard to explain now that I think about it. Maybe it's just my personal preference. Um, but yeah, the idea is to, I guess, the most practical application of it, setting aside the stylistic choice and all of that, is to avoid overwork. So if you can merge together a shape within the watercolor flow, you won't get a bunch of brush marks or things that look awkward it's just together as one big shape how would it make sense that that's that would be i guess the first kind of practical implication to avoid overwork it also helps one's eye around the painting simplifies the the, the painting for the viewer etc etc but yeah that's what i would say hey mesuko how are you doing uh, thank you for being here uh liza i recommend karen dash's neo color two crayons people are know their tools here that are watercolor, which is opaque and buttery soft, but firm pressure can be applied. Oh, okay, so that, and could you use that as opaque paint? I wonder, so I wonder if you can use that as opaque paint, because if you can, that'll be super useful. Kind of like my uh, white gel pen. Let me mute myself for a second. <laughs> Okay, we're back. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that'll be interesting. If I if there's something like my white gel pen that can be not white, that's actually... So let me check Karen Dash, just so that I... Um, Karen Dash, yeah. I've heard of this brand many times before, actually. So it's called Neo Color 2. Neo Color 2. Okay, I'll, I'll look into that. That's interesting. Okay, I see. So I think I can find it even locally. It looks like they have pretty crazy uh, supply chain. <laughs> so let's see here. Uh, two crayons. Okay, I'll definitely look into that. That's interesting. Tie-dye, tie-dye and done. I feel trying different styles helps evolve my own style and take things up a notch, definitely. Taking elements of each that complement. Yeah, and to me, the key has been to just do a lot of these and a lot of different ones so that I don't get too locked into one, right? Hope that makes sense. Uh, Lola MP, highly wrong. <laughs> I want to paint Lupita Nyogo, who has very dark skin. Uh, can you recommend a color palette to achieve these dark values? Thanks for the encouragement and great instruction. So I actually have a great hack for you. Um, you can use Carbazole Violet together with a Nickel Azo Yellow or together with a Lemon Yellow even. And that will get you like good dark purple-ish colors, right? Um, I'm actually not sure who that is. So let me uh, search Kenyan Mexican actress. Okay, so a lot of it will depend on lighting, right? Skin tones are very skin can be very reflective, so you'll see sometimes a lot of purples, a lot of oranges. Um, I would say it's it's pretty much the exact same mix as I use. Just use more paint, less water to achieve darker values. <laughs> Bye. Bye, Bye. Bye. <laughs> Christ. Bye. Bye, Um. <laughs> Let's see if she... I hope she won't bark again. So, yeah, same mixes, use a bit of, so the way I like to do this is first I'll mix kind of a pink and then I'll add, so I'll start red, a bit of yellow and then a bit of blue. That will give you gray, obviously, but you play around with the ratios, right? So if you use more red and more yellow, it'll become more brown. If you use more blue and, and more red, it'll become a little more purple and you kind of play in the balance of these. Skin, skin tones have also, they reflect green, they reflect, they have a bit of red due to the you know blood under the skin and all of that. So it's 
not as like straightforward as use this tone or this pigment, right? What you want to do is make sure that you have both. I would say make sure that each one of your primary colors can get dark because that way you'll get a better range of values, so, which means using a strong red that can go dark. Quinacridone rose is perfect for that. Using a strong blue that could be thalo blue, which is why, again, this is the most versatile palette. And then for the yellow, I would either use the lemon yellow, as I recommended to you, like the perfect palette, or nickel azo yellow. Because nickel azo yellow is still quite yellow. Yeah, it has a bit of a different kind of vibe to it, right? It has a bit of blue almost in it, but that's at least how I feel. It's a very kind of cool yellow. Lemon yellow is cool too. But in any case, switch to nickel as a yellow because it's dark. It can get quite dark. And that will help you a lot with mixing uh, neutral, brown, purple that are still dark while using all of these, right? I hope that makes sense. Um, Crispy, the audience changed enormously. Greetings to all from Germany. Uh, thank you for being here, Crispy. Uh, Gail, for me, Koi Noor, uh, four millimeter le uh, lead holder was a real game changer as a basic drawing tool. Cool. Yeah, I have a, actually a couple of, um, uh, like a set of watercolors by Koi Noor. I tried a few of them and I like them. So I'm curious. Uh, and yeah, Alan, sorry, we got to it. Uh, sorry, you had to type it twice. Born Again Farm Girl. I started with acrylic painting and enjoyed the control I had, but watercolor has my full attention because it was truly, it truly has a mind of its own. Yet something about it just captivates people. I definitely agree. Um, I, I even like the results I got with acrylics too, like you. Um, but yeah, just there's something that clicks with watercolor. Cheryl, when finished, do you, and I love the last name Velasquez. When finished, do you spray your paintings with a fit? Nope, I don't do any of that. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. How much practice is required? A lot. <laughs> a lot. As much as you possibly can. That's no way around that. At least a couple of hours every week. That's the bare minimum. Um, but again, some people may be gifted. I don't know. You know, maybe some people need less time. I needed a lot of time at first. Uh, I did see some people who got watercolor faster than me and clicked better than for them. Maybe they took like a proper class and that's how it happened or, or not. But yeah. Um, Woodrow Meeks, greetings and blessings from West Virginia. Thank you so much for being here. Um, blessings to you too. Uh, Siddharth, uh, hello, Aaron, or is it me? Okay, Leroy, that's probably a typo. It's always wonderful to watch your videos. Please keep making more beginner. Yep. I do intend to do more beginner oriented. Thank you for being here, my friend. Uh, Rob Rhodes, the transition from acrylic to watercolor is very hard for me, but wanted to raise a quitter. Uh, yep, definitely. And if you uh, enjoy watercolor enough, you'll make that transition successfully. <laughs> Eliza, yes, the inner stillness comes to us when we stop uh, to paint. I to us when we stop to paint. I lose track of time and I don't know my name and I feel like I have shrunk and sit on the tip of my brush is the only world, world that I know. Yeah, if I can sometimes really focus on the tip of the brush, it's just really relaxing. And I have to remind myself that I need to spend more time painting because that's when I feel these things. Joe Smith, highly on Winslow Homer once said, observe and solve your own problems. <laughs> Good advice, I think. Yep, yep. That's why I always say explore, explore. That's a great quote. I'm going to st steal that for Twitter. <laughs> I did a screen capture there. Daisy Shinori, Sakura pigment pens. I think there are knockoffs, which could be why it's much for you. Yep, that's exactly what happened. It was a, probably a knockoff off of eBay. Uh, I got one where the writing on the barrel faded. Yeah, I had a similar thing happen to me. Yeah, but by the way, thank you so much. We broke through 100 <laughs> simultaneous viewers. So thank you so much for being here. Uh, yes, more beginner videos on the way. Tie, dye, and done. What impressionist artists inspired you initially, like Henry Rousseau and, of course, Picasso? So more of the modern impressionist artists, I would say Sargent. Joseph Bukovic and Alvaro Castaday were the big ones, right? Uh, and this is not to say they're the best or something like that, but something about their work captivated me initially. And that's kind of the, it really imprinted, imprinted like made a real impression on me. So yeah, <clears throat> so that'll be it, I guess. But John Singer Sargent, amazing. His watercolors too. 
Ambrosi, uh, hi Laurent, who are your five favorite artists? I actually have a video of my top favorite five artists and uh, number one is myself. So I'll say I'm my own favorite artist. Uh, it's really hard to say because I discover new artists every day. Um, I'm not I'm not going to answer it because I can't. Uh, by the way, I love your profile pic with Asterix. I used to read Asterix as a kid. I loved it. That's what got me partially into like comics and wanting to create them as a kid. Um, yeah, I don't have a good answer for that because there's so many you know i probably could if i could i could probably name like 20 that are my favorite but not five uh so sorry about that and just today i discovered uh someone i wasn't familiar with let me tell you the name just from instagram's recommendation he was just scrolling uh jorge corpuna from peru he's incredible jorge corpuna if you write on instagram J O R G E. C O R P U N A. I just shared on the story. So check out the story. Something incredible. So that could be in my top 20. And you know, easy. So it's very hard to say, unfortunately. But I will say, like, a standout is John Singer Sargent. It's kind of just is he's up there. Uh, especially the more impressionistic landscapes, desertscapes. Love those. Um, Stephanie, hello. Hope you're doing well. Hey, Jill, how are you doing? Olivier, please, Laurent, tell us when using natural hair and synthetic brush, what's the real effect of each? Well, the natural hair is more is softer, right? So you can get an effect of foliage and kind of do a little weird shape more easily. Uh, and the synthetic brush will m have a better spring to it. And that sometimes make, makes other things easier to paint. The answer would be that the one I will steal from, um, who was it? Uh, from Homer. Uh, observe and solve your own problems. Because you'll have to, it's funny to say that, but like you'll have to really experiment with both to get it. And, and it's on such an abstract level, like it's hard for me to verbalize the difference. But I do know it because I use them. So I know how to approach painting with more um, synthetic and natural hair. Wait, look. Ruth's just staring there. Uh, I, I know how to, like, on an intuitive level, I know how to kind of approach painting with these two different styles. I will work a little differently with both, but it's more, it's a completely intuitive physical thing, right? So it's hard to explain. Sorry for the plenty of cop out answers. And no worries, Siddharth. Uh, Paula Campbell, my first watercolor instructor presented a saying, value does all the work, but color gets all the credit. Yeah, that's true. I heard that several times, actually. Um, and I will also say the large shapes do all the work. Screen capture. The large shapes do all the work and the small details uh, get all the credit. <laughs> Uh, Born Again Farm Girl, my tip for creating your own composition is to keep your focus on directing the eye to the subject, adding an unusual twist to that goal, like a winding stream or road. Focus on odd numbers. Three is good. Yep, three is good. Great. I love compositions of threes. And if you look at someone like Chiang Chung Wei, he really explains it well. Uh, check out the Seamless Expression website on Chiang Chung Wei um, workshop review. That's really good. Like he re he really thinks it all through. It's not an accident that his paintings are so good, not only in the technique, but also in the composition, which you can say is part of the technique, of course, but you know, you know what I mean. Uh, uh, Staline, I find it hard not to go in right away with saturated pigments. I find it hard not to go right away with saturated pigments instead of building up light to dark. I would embrace that. You know, that may be your unique kind of work method that gets your unique result. So I wouldn't shy away from that, actually. I have a hard time working slowly from light to dark. I do have like three washes, but some people five, six, as much as necessary and very pale. I don't like that either. So don't think you have to change the way you do it, right? Now, if you give me more specific examples, like if you send me a painting and I see what you did there, I can give better feedback. But based on just what you say here, I would just do what, what you feel like is right, you know? If you think it will be more correct to build it light to dark, you can kind of force yourself to just do a thin wash, another thin wash above it. You can do that. Um, but you have to be very aware of yourself as you paint. That's the thing. When people say, I have it hard not to. I find it hard not to do this. I have a hard time not doing this. You have to be 
maintain awareness as you paint. That's the thing. Like really think about every stage while you're doing the stage, right? I hope that makes sense. Uh, Siddharth, hello, I have a question. What's the right uh, way to paint? Like light to dark or dark to... It's funny that you say hello again because we talked already. Uh, I always get confused with that. There is no right way. Do whichever works for you. Try both. I do both and I enjoy both. It's really fun. Uh, Dwayne, for watercolor proof pens, I use... Oh, watercolor proof pens. I use a dip glass. Oh, so I did see some of these dip glass pens. They look really cool. Uh, there's this guy... What's his name? Not Peter Draws. Peter Draws? I think Peter Draws is someone else. Uh, oh, no, it is Peter Draws. Yeah, I remember it correctly. Yeah, he uses them, right? And they're really neat. I never had one of those. Interesting. Crispy, is it true that there are a lot of vegan or even plant-based uh, restaurants in Tel Aviv? If yes, it's another good reason to go there one day. Yeah, uh, definitely. The vegan scene is pretty strong here. It was like a big, big wave of people. I was vegan for four years. Um, so I know I used to cook a lot of, I used to cook a lot of chickpea omelets and I was pretty good at it. I should try and do that again just for nostalgia's sake. Uh, but yeah, uh, uh, Patricia, two artists I follow use fountain pens, both dip pens and cartridge pens for ink and watercolor wash painting. Love this style. You know what? I love that style too. Sometimes I don't like doing it for some reason, but I love the style from time to time, at least to see it. Um, there are a few artists like the one that works with, um, what's their name? The course website, something with Tika in the end. The, the Tika. I forgot their name, but you probably know what I'm talking about. Um, what's his name? I don't remember, but someone will say it. Um, man, I, I, I can almost remember, but uh, never mind. We'll move on. But yeah, that's, that's kind of... Um, Let's see if I can find it real fast. Oh, yeah, I got it. I got it. Um, Domestica. And the name of the artist is, let's see, I'll just search for watercolor and I find Alex Hilkertz. Darn it. Alex Hilkertz. Yes, of course. So I believe he does that too, right? I like seeing it. I don't like it as much myself to do it myself. Um, Zoe V, I paint with gouache, but when I when it dries, it becomes more dull. Do you think aquarelle is more vibrant medium than watercolor? Well, aquarelle is watercolor. Do you mean gouache is more of a vibrant medium than watercolor, or my gouache mixing is just off? That's interesting. I don't know enough about gouache, unfortunately. I would imagine that gouache could be more vibrant because you can kind of mix it at your own pace and really build the paint you want. One suggestion I will give is get a few dedicated tubes of very strong saturated paint. So something like a cobalt turquoise, something like the pyrrole scarlet or pyrrole orange, so that you can start from a very vibrant, strong paint and then mute it down if you want to or use it without mixing. Um, that would be my only suggestion. I don't know enough about gouache to say. Sorry. <laughs> um, Okay, so Dragonfly Art Cafe says I use wax, art wax to seal my paintings. Works lovely. Okay, it looks glossy when applied, but dries matte. Hmm. Yeah, I think I heard about wax. Painting wax. Let's see. Painting wax. Okay, I may try that. That sounds good to me. <laughs> because this, the liquids I tried just kind of ruined the look. So, yeah. Uh, Arun, your tutorials are tremendous. Thanks, Arun. Thank you so much. Uh, nature sketches. What is the best way to learn values? That, oh, so we kind of answered that, but check out my video on how to match values. I have a bunch of these, actually. That'll be the best way to answer. Uh, Jan, last live stream, people asked about good 100% cotton uh, watercolor sketchbooks. Now I've tested my etcher every day. Yeah, a lot of people mentioned the etcher, uh, and I can report it is excellent through watercolor paper, unlike my old Hanemula pull paper. Cool, cool. That's really good to know. Etcher are rocking, it looks like. Uh, Stefania, how are you doing? Hello, Liron. I've uh, that following your video. I made a difference. It made a difference in my painting. I want to say that, that I want to say that in public. Thank you so much. Especially focus on the real point of the subject. Oh, like the big idea, right? First one I saw was Prague. Bravo. Thank you so so much, Stefania. So happy to hear. Um, let's see here. Also waxes before sending them to customers. She warns that if you are planning to enter some competition or exhibit in certain galleries, wax is not allowed. Interesting. Okay, that's good to know. I was lucky that I sell directly, <laughs> so I can do whatever the flip I want. Uh, Kristen Pennock, 
Uh, hello from Michigan. Do you have any tips for doing pet portraits similar to the 10 minute portrait technique you did a while back? Would it even work considering the fur? Yes, it would. One big advice I'll give you about that. Focus on the outlines of the shape rather than drawing each and every fur hair separately. The thing people think with fur is that they need to paint each and every hair. Nope, you don't. What you need to do is capture the right shapes of light and shadow. So even if it's a light fur, there's a mid-value shadow on it. And make sure the edges of the shape show the fur pattern. The viewer will understand what they're looking at. Believe me, they will. Now, if you want to send me an example via email, I'll be happy to look and then I'll let you know kind of more specific advice. But that's the, that's because I did get to um, give a lot of advice related to pet portraits. And, and that's actually a big part of it. It's the outline of the shape, not the details of the hair inside it that are mostly excessive and unnecessary. Dwayne, any tips on creating interesting backgrounds for your paintings? It's funny to say, like, I just paint it as I see it and try to match the values and colors. So interesting. I wouldn't know. Maybe if you move elements around to better complement the focal point, that could be one idea. So let's say your focal point is here and there's something very interesting in the background right here. Don't put it right next to it. Move it a bit so that there's a bit of spacing and you can lead the viewer into your focal point. That's one idea, placement. Another thing I would say, sometimes it's useful, let's say your focal point has a very strong color in it that's a bit unique, like a pyro scarlet, cobalt turquoise, very bright. You can use that same color in a smaller amount somewhere else in the background, and it will feel like it ties it up together, right? So for someone like Alvaro Castaneda, he uses a lot of fiery reds for his street signs and, and, um, and traffic lights, right? So if you include like a big red, like a person in the front that has a bit of red in it, and then you put a few smaller ones in the background, it can really help the viewer kind of get to the person, or it can help from the person that's the focal point, jump to those traffic lights and guide them through the painting. So that, I think, is something I can help with. Uh, Eliza, Jane Blundell is a friend of mine, and she says a yellow flower shadow is done with the neutralizing opposite. Oh, okay, so violet. Yeah, so I do have a caveat for that. Um, now, Jane um, Blundell, I'm familiar with her work. So you just want to uh, want to be sure that I remember. I do agree on that on a basic level, but there are some caveats to that. Yeah, Jane's amazing. Yeah, I remember now. Uh, but there are some caveats to it. Um, you don't necessarily want to just use the, the violet. <clears throat> you may want to neutralize the violet a bit too, because sometimes it can be too much and it can feel a bit like more illustrative look. And if you're not aiming for that, that could be not what you're after. Okay. Uh, Kristen, uh, okay, that's a reply. Uh, Tom, not to shill for myself, but I build web mobile things for a living. You know how to reach me if you need anything. Oh, awesome. I will talk to you then. <laughs> Problem solved. I'll, I'll consult with you at least. Um, yeah, we'll see. Because I do have like background in, in WordPress and and I did do like the current website I have is very simple. The, the Liranian.com is WordPress. And I that's not what I refer to. I built better looking websites in the past, but kind of for different uses and then I quit them. So I do um, I do uh, have the ability. I just don't know if I want to deal with it and if something breaks. My big worry with WordPress and you let me know what you think about it and I'll, I'll consult with you later maybe is just even if you use a very like highly regarded theme that looks good and is customizable and it will look like my own what's the what are the odds that WordPress do an update and then the theme is no longer compatible and things will just break you know that that thing I don't want to deal with that or a plugin that stops working are the good let's say even premium paid plugins uh, reliable enough so that that won't happen that's my main worry so I don't know sorry for had a weird hiccup there um but thank you so much and great chill actually I will talk to you. <laughs> uh, Siddharth, I really love your boat painting demonstration. That was such an eye-opener. Please make more videos, such videos more. It's so interesting because I had no idea people will have such a strong reaction to that video. I've seen so many comments of people saying that my art has grown so much since the last time and that's the video they saw or that this may be my best painting yet. And I'm like, I would have never thought of this as my best painting yet. If anything, 
my best painting uh, is to this point would be either my self-portrait that I did in the mirror, the black and white one. And if you're really following, you know what I'm talking about. It was a while ago. <clears throat> either that or like the gas cans, the recent one. I would even say Haifa, which is not like the most technically impressive, but it is just darn good. And it's very much the way I imagine my style to be. But people really like that boat painting. Uh, I don't know why. So yeah, if you can drop your cent two cents in, I'm, I'm just wondering why. Because I don't, I like it, but it's not, I wouldn't say it's my best, but I'm so happy it was helpful at the very least. Um, Daddy Henry, how to learn color harmony. First, I would even forget about theory for a while, and I would consider this idea. A lot of color harmony is experimenting with colors and learning what you like and what mixes and looks good to you. Let me give you an example. I did not like phthalo green in the past. I kind of even hated it. But when I started using it with yellow ochre, I realized that these two work really well together. And then I discovered it works well with ultramarine as well. And here's Ruth looking at me with this look like, oh, I'm poor. Feel sorry for me. <laughs> um, so I would throw the idea at you. Yes, there is theory. Green neutralizes red. They're opposing on the color wheel, blah, 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 blah. Experiment. Find the color combinations that you enjoy. Let me give you another suggestion. Look at a couple of artists that you really like. Look at their paintings and try and you can even use Photoshop or anything else to sample the colors and look at what colors they're using, what colors they're mixing. Try using them yourself. Start small. Two colors even. Just two is enough. Then add a third one, add a fourth one and see what works together for you. That's what I would say. Now, as for like practically how to do it, Grab a sheet of paper and just start doing all sorts of mixes. Just try a bit of yellow and red to see the orange it produces. Maybe add a bit of blue to that, turns brown, right? Try out a lot of things and then look at your page. You're going to have a big page full of different colors mix, which is beautiful to look at, by the way. And just choose a couple of colors that look good and that you like, and you will build all of these mixes from just three colors or four colors. So they will be harmonious, right? Now, the question is, do you like that harmony or not? So you basically circle the ones you love, and then you try recreating them. You try putting them together in a painting and see how that works. So grab a big old sheet of watercolor paper and just start mixing. And, and you have the answers. Really, you have them because you will know what you like in terms of color harmony. It's very personalized. And whatever you enjoy and like the most will reflect the best as a painting. Because people will understand. They will see your confidence. They will feel your love for your own work. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> um, Patricia, I love these live sessions where we can ask you questions. So many live sessions by other artists are just a one-way street. Yeah, and I feel so bad because I'm so slow going over the chats. But at the very least, I can answer almost everyone. So that's a good thing. Uh, like, you know, at least I'll answer your question. And and this is just the best, the fastest, most efficient way for me to keep communicating with you, you know, because messages are so time consuming. There's so much like emails, so time consuming. This is the best way, honestly. Uh, they want you to log on and watch, but there is no interaction. Yeah, definitely. That's not my deal. It's all about the story. Every painting has a story and people love to hear them. Yep, yeah, that is so true. That is so true. That's like the big idea. That's what leads me in, in, in most of my good paintings. Uh, Joe Smith, prices have to be targeted to the audience. Street fairs need lower prices, galleries higher. Yes, that's true to some extent. And I would say if you feel like your price is the price that the audience or market dictates is too low for you, just change the market. So don't sell it at a street fair, right? You don't have to be there. Just saying. Um, you know, galleries. So here's the funny thing. Some of the paintings I sold through galleries, I made the exact same amount of money at the end of the day as I sold in the art fair because the gallery took like 50%, 70% even sometimes. So... It's kind of, you know, the advantage is I gave the, paint, the paintings to the gallery and then I, you know, they did all the work. People came to them and it's more passive. Uh, but yeah, definitely, definitely. Galleries have more expenses too. Infinite, sir, when will I become like you? If you choose so today. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, you will have to become more like yourself, not like me. So try and uh, learn more what you are about and become more like you. That's the best advice I can give you. One thing I can say that that I 
always felt, even in times where I was less happy in my life, I never wanted to be someone else. I don't remember any time. And I'm, I'm not saying this like to, I'm not, I'm not uh, making fun of you or anything like that, because I know you're probably half kidding, but like, I never wanted to trade places with anyone, even people who have more than me in a way, you know, because like, I like myself. So that's what I'm, I'm going to do. I'm going to do myself. I'm going to go all in on myself whatever that produces, right? And I have a lot of weaknesses, a lot of things I'm not good at. I just focus on the things I am good at and try to do a lot of that. Uh, Staline, that's what I love about watercolor over oil and acrylic. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Anand, Ananda, Anand, oh, sorry, Anand, yes, I remember, I think uh, we talked on Instagram maybe once, Anand Artistry, hi, Liron, love from India, bro, thank you so much. Uh, Johannes, uh, Liron, how often do you do plain air painting? Zero, practically zero, I haven't gone in a long, long time, and I should, once in a while, I'll just look at something around in the studio or on my desk and paint that, so that's kind of from direct observation, but I'm so bad at going and doing plain air. It's been probably at least six months since I did one last time. Not good. Not good. Uh, Kate Korg, hello from Ukraine. I'm really inspired by your videos and I'd love to see more and simpler for me to draw. Yeah, I try to mix in kind of like sometimes simpler ones and uh, simple drawing, simple painting, you know. Uh, but yeah, if so, let me ask you a question. And first, hope you're doing well in Ukraine. I hope the situation there is going to improve fast because it's like, man. Um, so best wishes on that regard. Now, let me know if there's a video of mine. That'll be great feedback for me. If there was a video of mine that really, and you can leave a comment if you see this after the live stream, or you, if you want to make sure I see it, leave a comment. Um, if there was a video that, that you felt like was really to your level in drawing and painting, um, I'm curious to see, because then I'll know, okay, something like this, I'll do more of. Now, that will really help. Born Again Farm Girl, social media buzz has driven my customer base. In fact, I try to avoid posting my paintings because I get a lot of requests for commissions. Not my favorite. That's kind of, you know, it's it's a, it's a nice problem to have. Some people really want to do commissions and they can't. Um, now, when you say has driven my customer base, you mean it brought more of them or it driven them away, right? I'm, I'm not sure. I, I hope they brought more of them, right? Um, yeah, I'm not a big fan of commissions too. I barely do them. 99% of the time I do a commission, it's not fun. And I didn't do many. So it's probably like nine out of 10 times. Uh, Marjorie, have you used DaVinci watercolor? Um, not that I remember. No, haven't gotten the chance to yet. Prema, I'm not satisfied with my artwork at the end. Every time I thought I, uh, every time though, I enjoy the process. Is it normal? Um, it is normal. The question is, is it healthy, right? So what I say is find something to love about your artwork. Find one thing about every painting that you love and then ask yourself, why does it look good? Why do I, you can even ask for, you know, other people and they'll tell you what their favorite part is and then try and do more of that, right? Instead of looking at a painting as a win or a loss, there is a lot of gray in between. Some parts of the painting you got right. Other parts you kind of messed up, you know? So try and look at it more from that gray approach. I think it will be very beneficial for a lot of people to kind of shift their focus in that way. Right? I hope that makes sense. Um, but it's it's very natural. My question is like, uh, is, is it the healthiest way to, to make art, you know? Teresa McVeigh. Da Vinci is a wonderful artist, great paint made in California. It is very affordable and available in big tubes. Cool. Cool. Uh, Joe Smith, more interviews with artists coming up. Uh, so currently I don't have any of them planned. <clears throat> I don't even have like, I do want to bring Joseph's Bukovic maybe. So like that's something I'm thinking about, Alvaro Castaneda as well, but uh, nothing concrete planned at all at the moment, I have to be honest. Uh, but th there will be another wave hopefully. Yep. <laughs> Uh, click the like button. Yeah, thank you so much, everyone. If you can hit that like button, that'll be great. Thank you. Karen Penner, Opus Essential is a brand that is a part of a chain of stores in Canada. Not related to the question about Da Vinci Opus Color. Opus Essentials is a brand. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Opus Essentials. Huh. Okay. What was the original question, though? I'm not familiar with that. Even when I look for Opus Essentials, I just find watercolor. Like not, um, so I don't know if I find the, uh, okay, I don't know. I'm confused. Uh, feel free to, if you watch this after the fact and you kind of, uh, Karen, you or anyone else, 
let me know in a comment if I if I'm confused about something. I'll be happy to read and kind of understand where I got things wrong. I'm not sure. Uh, Stefania, to mix color is better aluminum, plastic, or ceramics or something else. Um, some people say that ceramics is better. To me, honestly, I I don't even remember if I think I tried ceramics once. I couldn't tell the difference. I enjoyed both. The one thing with aluminum is you kind of need to, or plastic, you need to scratch it a bit so that it doesn't bead as much, which isn't that big of a deal, honestly. I don't know. And flat or different, I'm not sure what you mean by flat. Like, is there a like a angle where the paint pools? I did okay with both. I don't mind whether it's flat or at an angle. I'm good with that. Uh, Banani, uh, how are you doing? Yes, I tested it with soap and it works. So I yesterday. Oh, cool, cool. Good to know. Good to know. It's, it's such a weird technique to put your brush over soap and it's weird. Uh, Jeff Kersey uses tons of masking fluid and always rubs the brush and soap also first. Just seems to be regular bar of soap. That's interesting. Kerry, do you use a fixative? Nope. Uh, and some people recommend it here. Wax. Um... But you have to be careful again regarding uh, if you want to put it in galleries or art shows. Sometimes they prohibit it. So painting wax, I guess. Uh, Shishka will screw for masking fluid. Funny. Uh, Manet, hi. Good evening, Liron. Uh, Ariel Manet from Philippines. How are you doing, my friend? Uh, Paula, use any bar soap and expensive and an inexpensive brush. Yep, yep. Everyone says that. That's interesting. So. What I'm going to do is go over the rest of the chat fast, and I'm going to just look at a couple of questions and skip some. So you'll forgive me because I want to move towards wrapping it up, but I do want to at least get to the end of the chat. So let's see if I can find more uh, questions here or some very interesting remarks. So we'll skip a few. Sorry about that. Let her bark again. Yeah, she's so cute. We love her. Um, pay more to remove their logo see that thing i don't like like why why isn't it a part of the package you know uh but yeah i get it. it's business um let's see here there's some questions highly ron what do you think about the recent technique jennifer by the way asks what do you think of the recent techniques of varnishing finished watercolor rather than framing under glass i question the longevity of it so i cannot question i cannot um uh, comment on the longevity because I don't know, but I like that look. I have seen a few of these and I actually like the way they look. Um, so, yeah. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Uh, Leslie, hello, Liron. I enjoy your videos and love your paintings. What pound paper? Yeah, so for me, it's 300. 600 is a treat. If you just want to get like one sheet and try and use it, it's fun. It's really fun, especially large ones. They won't buckle as much, but it's more expensive and I find it's not really necessary. Um, I guess if you maybe shipping wise, like it guarantees that the paint, the paper doesn't, isn't bended even it's even stronger, but I don't know. I never have these problems because I put strong cardboard over it. So it's never really a problem. Uh, but yeah, I wonder, um, 600 is very fun, but not really doesn't justify the price difference for me because 300 is good enough. Uh, you should look up uh, James Gurney. He's one of the best with helpful videos. Like, yeah, I love James Gurney. And maybe I'll do more videos like his where it's like five minutes. Uh, Marigold, I'm in one of those want to paint but don't know what to paint phase. I look at reference photos, the countryside around me, etc. Nothing I see makes me want to paint it. Help, please. Very familiar with this. I had a short time period where I felt like that. No subject satisfied me. Just paint something, even if you dislike it or you're not sure about it. You will learn to bring yourself onto every uh, reference photo you paint. That's the thing. Let me block myself as I blow my nose. I want to make sure I don't have any <laughs> in, uh, leftover in my beard. So yeah, sorry about that. Um, just go for it. And even if you dislike the subject, uh, I think you will learn how to bring your uniqueness and your skills to that. Okay. Don't look for inspiration externally. You bring the inspiration and change what you see, you know, modify it, do it in a fun way, change the colors, make it more saturated, make it, make it use unrealistic colors, do the sky in red, right? Now that kind of a thing can really help to develop the freedom, right? Of the tops. Um, what is a good platform to build a website on? So a lot of people mentioned Faso, F-A-S-O. Um, let's, I'm not an expert again. I'm looking still, but I may consult, uh, with Tom. Um, let's see. 
<laughs> Marjorie says, I heard artists say if you want to sell a painting, put in either a boat or a cardinal. That's funny. My five cents. Unifying the washes made a boat painting your best painting for your viewers. Unifying the washes made a boat painting your best. Yeah. Interesting. Because <laughs> I do that a lot, but still, I wonder. Do you have thoughts on using a slant board with watercolor? My table is at an angle, and I put my board at an angle so i like to have it at an angle now i don't know is slant board a thing like isn't it an object or it's just like you know slant. oh okay oh for the legs you mean i guess you mean for the legs um because i looked for slant board and it's you know leg rest i actually use it i have it here uh it it's it's nice it's comfortable it's better than without one i think um let's see here the vibrant color you I think the vibrant color you used on the boat painting really appealed to a lot of people. It just really jumps off the page. Interesting. Um and as for uh, Patricia, the one uh, they're referring to is the one of the most recent videos I did actually. Hmm. Opus is a color similar to Oprah. Unfamiliar with it. Oprah I love. I know it looks beautiful. Um Kimberly, curious, uh, how many brands of watercolor have you tried? Do you still buy and try new brands? Or once you find a one uh, brand, you stick with it forever? I actually still try new brands. But if I have to count them, let's see. Daniel Smith, Van Gogh is the one I started with. Uh, if we go with the student grade, Vene Venetia. Um, Shinhan PWC, which is artist grade now. Schmenka, SAA, M. Graham. Paul Rubin, White Knights. Um, let me think, because I'm surely forgetting Rosa, Rosa Gallery. That's 10 already. Um, what am I missing? I think I'm missing like one or two. Oh, well, Windsor and Windsor and Newton. That's 11 brands already. Uh, what else? What else? I think that's around the number. And I keep trying. Now, I barely have to buy because I have tons of supplies. And John sent me so many paints that I just go go through them slowly at my pace. Um, but I would say these are the main ones. And I do try occasionally new ones. I'm sure I for, I'm forgetting a few. Plus, I have a few made by indie creators. Um, but yeah, those are the main ones, I guess. Um, please tell some tips for realistic watercolor painting. So let me give you a very basic tip for realistic watercolor painting. And it may sound weird, but more preparation, do some sketches, value studies, really understand what it looks like in black and white. One. Two, work slower, more glazes of thinner paint. When I did the gas cans, that's how I did it. More glazes of wetter water uh, to paint ratio. So more water. More watery. It gives you the ability to build it up in stages. Slower, more focus. That's the best advice I can give you, like very common sense. Now, a couple of other things that I usually do and you should do probably is take the photo reference, if it's a photo, turn it black and white and really look at it. Print out both versions. Look at them while you paint. Really think about what's the value, what's the color, because you're trying to be realistic, right? So you have to follow it closely. Um, I would say use something like the posterize feature in Photoshop to see the simpler values. If you can drop the number of values to just four, five, three, even depending on the, the scene or the subject, and slower, you know, slower, more patient. That's the best tip I can give you. That's how I did my realistic watercolor paintings so far. Just slower work, more patient, more layers that are thinner. Gives you the opportunity to build it up slower. To me, that's a more tedious process, but the end result does uh, make it very satisfying. So yeah, I hope that helps. Um, Karen, sorry to confuse you. That conversation was about 20 minutes ago. Yeah, now I I, I read reread some of the chat messages from the recent ones. Yeah, it's my fault for being so late on the chat. So sorry about that. Um, let's see here. Boats and boat painting. That's cool. 
Okay, we got too close to the end of the chat. So let's take just a few more and we'll wrap it up. Avrotech 360. Sir, my question is how to control the amount of water in brush and while mixing paints during watercolor. So I'm going to actually send you a link to uh, a video that talks just about that that I did that I think is very useful. Um, amount of water in brush and while mixing. Yep, yep, yep. So this is going to be handling wing paint on the palette. That's one of my best kind of beginner videos that just a lot of people don't discuss that, that most low level, like in a good way, technique. There's an ad on it because it's an old video that I did put an ad on. So my apologies because we talked about ads and I don't put any more. Uh, handling paint on palette. I actually calculated it a couple of days ago, like how much money I would have made if I put ads on all of my videos for the past two years or so, I would have made so much more money. It's so funny, but I don't, I prefer not to. Maybe I'll change my mind one day, but I don't see it happening. Um, so yeah, I hope that video will help you. Uh, Avrotech, see here. Uh, the audio is a little crappy there, but that's fine. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, Nancy, for being here. Uh, how to paint like Rebecca Deutemer, Doit I guess? Rebecca Deutemer. Watercolor, is it? Let's see. Interesting. Oh, why doesn't it find anything? I'm misspelling it, maybe? Rebecca oh, Deutemer. Timmer, Dotimer, Dotimer. Let's see. Okay, got it. Um, let's see here. Oh, that's very interesting. Honestly, I have no idea because that's very different from my style. So obviously there is use of wet and wet. Ooh, that's a good question. That's an interesting style. I don't have an answer right out the gate. Very interesting though. Huh. There's a very specific feel to it. I have no idea. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know. It looks so good. Uh, let's see. Do you check what the binder is in the painting brand? Some brands use honey and most use gum Arabic. So I don't actually check, but I know, like I know M. Graham uses it. If it's important, I'll check. But to me, even M. Graham's dried okay, even though it has honey in it. It does dry a little more moist and easy to reawaken, but it's still quite usable, even plein air. Um, oh, that's a great advice, Joanne. If I lose my mojo, I'll paint swatches or experiment with color mixing. It keeps my mind and muscle loose and ready for it to return. Yeah, kind of like what I do with warm-ups. That's really useful. Um, Omega Ruby EE. So is that is that a reference to Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire by a Pokemon game? <laughs> Let me know. How long do you spend on one painting before going into the next one? Probably an hour and a half max. Something like that. Watercolor is fast. Um, Patricia, okay, yeah, that's that. Um, have you used Oxygol or other granulation mediums? Not really, Diane. Um, I know about them, but I sometimes use granulating paint, but not like an actual medium or something to mix in that makes more granulation. So yeah, white Reza edge blending practice. Yeah, that's a great idea. Um, so yeah, I think we're ready to wrap it up. I know I missed a couple of chats, not too many, but a couple of them. So as always, if you want to increase the chances of me seeing it, ask it as a comment on the video and I'll hopefully see an answer to everyone. I want to thank you so much. It's been two hours and 20 minutes. So my voice is getting a little tired and I have a lot of work still to finish. And it's Thursday today, which means uh, it's time to end the week soon. I also have a bit of preparations for uh, next week's vacation. So that's another thing. And so my apologies again in advance, because I'm going to do a lot of uh, kind of repurposing of live streams making new videos out of them, but I at least made sure to choose the live streams that are 1080p. So even though it's, you know, it's live stream quality, it's still pretty good quality. Um, so yeah, and I hope you'll still enjoy them. Uh, how can I learn this style? So all right, I'll just to kind of wrap it up about um, Rebecca Dautemer. Try and recreate her paintings. Try and that's how I did it. You see a painting you like, try and recreate that and try a bunch of them. Like take five of or so and try and paint them. You know what? Here's what we'll do. Try and paint them. After you do five or so, email me, send me the results, and I'll be happy to help. Because I wanna I wanna see if you if you'll do that and if you'll do these studies. I think it will really help.
Uh, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, once again, check out the links as always in the description box below. You can find the courses, you can find a Patreon there, you can find everything. Uh, this really helps me to continue doing what I'm doing. Um, this is what pays the bills. This is what pays for Ruth's food. <laughs> you know, when you buy a course or uh, anything like that. Uh, Patreon support, again, hugely appreciated. Uh, you can just do like a dollar a month or five dollars a month or whatever. That's that's actually huge. People don't know this, but it's really helpful, um, especially as an artist. I'm trying to have a lot of streams of income because there's no certainty in anything. But I think we found out in the last two years that there's a lot of uncertainty in the job market as well. So, yeah. So I wish everyone like the have a great day. Have a great rest of the week. A great weekend. Stay safe and healthy. I really enjoy these chats. So thank you so much for uh, for everyone who joined in. Um, and I will. I really hope to do more of these a week. I know I said I'm considering reducing the number of videos, but I really hope doing more of these because that's like the best chance to catch up and it's, it's the fastest way to interact. So yeah, and maybe in the future I can do something where I share the link with you and you can actually join and I can add you and we can talk. And you can see you split screen. That could be fun. Sometimes people do that. Uh, let me know if you're interested in it. I think you will because it's like it's the, the fastest way to communicate and you know, I don't have to read a question and we can just do a conversation. So we can do something like that. That'll be insane, but I think it could work. So I'll just send the link to join and then I'll bring you in one at a time or something like that. that could be fun actually uh but yeah we'll we'll consider doing all of that working on a web page for you to see all of my materials everything i use brushes so you'll see the lebanon brushes right which i should talk about more lebanon brushes the promo code liron still is in effect 20 percent off check that out but you know the paints the paper the even like what i use for filming i'll put everything there so you can see but i'm working on it it will happen soon hopefully thank you so so much We'll talk to you again real soon. Sorry, again, I see the, some new chat messages. Write them as a comment, and I'll address them. Thank you so, so much. We'll talk again real, real soon. And on Saturday's video, I hope you'll enjoy that one too. So we'll talk.